Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy, What If Entertainment. Now, if you wondering what happened to the Green Arrow video, I had to take it down because, well, the audio on some of the, I believe some of the audio was messed up. I know in the intro it messed up, so I was like, you know what? Or oh, and um, so I was like, you know what? Let's just re. I'm just gonna re um re put the video together. I put it together again and just redo it. But this is, will be the first what if out brand new. And it's going to be what if Deku was Jiraiya's reincarnation. Now, I hope you guys will go on to enjoy this what if. And I will see you later. But before we move on to the intro, let's go into today's promotional segment. Special thanks to Six Meister for creating our awesome avatar. Go ahead and check out his Fiverr gig. For more amazing designs. If you like the new avatar, you can go check him out in the link in the description. There will be a link to both of his Fiverr account, his Fiverr account for I believe um their avatar creation and thumbnail creation. He comes you can do it in multiple styles. Naruto, I believe Naruto being one of those styles, there was my hero too, and I would assume Bleach, but then I may be confused. So Go check out Six Meister. His YouTube channel will also be linked in the description, as will be his Discord. Go check him out. Links will all be down below. I will see now from here. Let's go into this video. It must be stuck in my chest. Parasite will block me like the rest. I ain't no half and fucking pussy waste and dogs for less distress. For them, my love is wrap his arms to neck. Trying to pull me like a bomb and have been at the press. See these low line pussies with the nerve to complain when you're the only fucking reason when they're stressing your brain. So today's what if starts off with Deku's birth. You see, rather than Deku, well, rather than Deku being born with his canon features of. Well, um, his green hair with, there seems to be black in some areas, but his green hair and his green eyes and freckles. He would be born with white hair, I believe like a dark, like a black or a dark gray colored eyes and red marks going down, well, underneath said eyes. His father and mother wondered what exactly caused his their son to come out looking like this, wondering if it was an adaptation to his quirk. As years go on, Deku befriends a young child from his birth, uh, from his parents' best friend, the Bakugos. He befriends Katsuki, and the two of them grow to be the best of friends up until Deku finds out he's quirkless. At that point, Deku being quirkless, things begin to change all around him. One of those being Bakugos began bullying him for being quirkless, and one day Bakugos a bit too far. So far that Deku was injured to the fact that, well, he's not unconscious. Bakugo and his friends obviously scared that they went too far would run away from Deku, hoping that no one would know that they did it. But with Deku, when he would wake up, the next thing he'd wake up to is hearing a voice say, Hey kid, kid, wake up. When Izuku opened his eyes, he realized he was in the same spot that he was when Bakugo had attacked him earlier. Well, that he had run to from Bakugo, but they had chased him down. He remembered being knocked out right here. He wondered what had happened when he noticed the white-haired man with the same marks down his face as he did. And even the same little marking, um, I can't remember, uh, birthmark mole thing on his nose just like he had. The man would say, oh, kid, you gave me quite the scare there. He would offer his hand to Izuku. Izuku would take it, surprisingly feeling less injured. The man would tell Izuku what exactly happened, and he had seen a bunch of kids leaving here and that he had come to check it out. Well, I'm mean, to Izuku, he was lying to him. Izuku would explain the situation, but he would tell the man not to tell anyone on, not to tell anyone about what happened, because he didn't want to ruin Kachan's chance of becoming a hero. The man laughed, saying, sticking out for others, even though you, even though they hurt you. So I began to think, this kid's just like me in Naruto. Jiraiya would tell the kid not to worry. Before, Jiraiya would say, hmm, you know, kids, you're quite interesting. You look like me. Izuku would say that he'd noticed, asking if he was like maybe his uncle or something. 
he will shake his head saying that he doesn't have any relatives that he knows of that they were all killed um not long after his birth he would tell izuku but there was something special about him he asked izuku he told izuku to come back tomorrow and they would find out what that special thing was to come back till here exactly and to keep it a secret Izuku would nod, wondering what special what was there that was special, just out of curiosity. He would never tell his mother or Bakugo. And the next day he'd come back to find the man waiting for him. The man would tell Izuku to sit down and begin meditating. Izuku would do so though with some um hardships. Until the man guides Izuku into doing something. When suddenly Izuku could feel the wind picking up. And feeling a bit drained, before the man would tell him to stop meditating and to open his eyes. Izuku would see his body surrounded by a blue energy. Would ask if this was his quirk, but the man would say, mm, I don't think so. Izuku, the man would say that from his knowledge that he has about these quirks, Izuku does not possess one. Rather, he possesses something, an ancient power known as Chakra. Saying that this Chakra is indistinguishable from him. From his own, not telling Yuzuku that Chalk Two Chakra signatures cannot be um cannot be the exact same like theirs. Izuku, it would tell Izuku that he do he trained Izuku in everything he know, past now every technique he knew, every single training here, as long as Izuku manages to keep it a secret. Izuku would not, as the man, uh, as the man himself smiles. He would tell Izuku that this. That this is just to secure his future before unrolling a scroll and telling Izuku to sign it, telling him to to bite his thumb, and um to um write his name and um, to write his name in kanji on it before dabbing the blood on all five of his fingertips um, and his thumb tip. Obviously, I don't think it's called that, but we're gonna say thumb tip and we'll place it on the scroll. He would tell Izuku that he'd get into what the scroll gives him later, but for now, they'll begin their training. He begins Izuku's training through hard physical training, and for year for years though, they that's exactly what they would do, teaching Izuku the basics of fighting or taijutsu, as the man called it. Next year, they would go into chakra theory and manipulation, and influence Jutsu. Jiraiya so decided to teach the kid early. As Izuku continues to go on throughout time, he pulls. He begins to well uh, act the same as Deku, act as our canon Deku, as a shy and meek child. Something that Jiraiya had instilled in him, saying to never let anyone, not even someone who he considered his friend, telling him that well, Katsuki was not really his friend if he was treating him this way, to not show anyone this power. The power of chakra is something vast and something that could completely outclass quirks. Which made Izuku a one of a kind person, saying that any so if anyone, even his own mother, knew about this and had to register him with the quirk registration, that Izuku could some bad guys could find that and could try to kill his parents, his friends, or anyone just to get to him so they could study chakra. Izuku would obviously he Jiraiya's um advice and would keep it a secret, acting the same as he was as in. Um, more of a nerdy Izuku like our canon Izuku, but he also began to act a bit perverted, picking up on Jiraiya's tendencies. As they continued their training, they continued their training into Ninjutsu the next couple of years, and Jiraiya began teaching Izuku everything he knew, starting from chakra control all the way up to nin uh, high level Ninjutsu and building his reserves. When Izuku was around, I say 10 years old. Rather, because I do believe all the Sani themselves did graduate a bit earlier than can than our canonical, um, like Team Seven than Team Seven did, which was twelve. I think they graduated maybe like ten or eleven. They might have graduated at twelve. Jiraiya would tell Izuku that he's going to teach him something, something called the reverse summoning technique. He would begin to go through, um, the hand signs, telling Izuku to follow his hand signs exactly. And once they do so, Izuku would slam his hands on the ground, performing the reverse summoning. Both Jiraiya and Izuku would both disappear in a puff of smoke, appearing on, well, a place 
full of well, or um, what is you could things to be some weird liquid flowing from well these weird shaped leaves. It was like a mountain. It was like in a mountain range. As Izuku looked around, Jiraiya told him to follow. As they made their way around, Izuku and Jiraiya would eventually make their way to, well, um, the resting place of the Toad Elder. Once Izuku would make it there, Jiraiya would tell the kid to open the door. And Izuku would do so. Walking in, he would see two elderly toads, like really old toads. And an even more old toad that seemed to be on the cusp of death. As Izuku asked Jiraiya what were they doing here, the two frogs would ask how did he get here exactly? They were asking what does he mean Jiraiya? They haven't heard that name in, well, a couple of years. Well, a hundred years or so. As Izuku says Jiraiya, he's standing beside me, only to notice Jiraiya was not there. Jiraiya with the kid will tell the kid to not tell anyone of his presence. Something gives you that he's currently using an Anjutu to stay hidden from them. Something that told others that he come here to seek training from them. And, and uh, wishes for them to teach him everything he can. But he tells them that they have to do it after school. Because of the fact is that he's still in school and wishes to become a hero. And then to do so, he has to go back home every day. The told elders ask what world is he from because they sense that he didn't come from the same world as most ninjas. As well, no one really helped the Toad Contract at the moment. Well, at all, since the Toad Contract seemingly disappeared from the world of Shinobi. Around 10 years ago, to be more precise. As Izuku explained his world to them, the Toads were amazed and said that they would gladly help the boy, especially thinking to themselves especially because he looks like Jiraiya. Jiraiya. Maybe he was his, but that was possible. Obviously, they've seen and heard of, seen the reincarnations of Indra and Asher. So they began training Izuku and in, in, in their, um, in the way of a Toad Sage, beginning his training, not in Sinjutsu, but in mastering their Taijutsu and fighting alongside their battle toad. Every day after school, Midoriya would do this, all the way up to 17. He would even continue training his training with Jiraiya. At that point, Izuku was quite strong, actually having adapted every single one of his techniques, Jiraiya's techniques. As he looked at his sensei and the toe elders, Jiraiya would hand over, would, um, would take off his headband, before placing it behind well, we'll bring it got a gift to Midoriya, it being a headband and the scroll that contains the toad, um, the, the toad, um, summoning, um, the toad clan summoning, um, scroll. As he would hand them over, the toads would watch as these things, the right headband, and the toad, um, summoning scroll magically appeared in his hands, wondering exactly what had happened. As Midoriya would bow to his master, Jiraiya would thank him for becoming such an awesome student. As he tells Midoriya that now he has around 11 months before the um, UA entrance exams after he turned, um, I believe the entrance exams would be after he turned 18, so yes, he has around 11 months, <clears throat> he has around 11 months before he is the UA entrance exams and to tr take his training up even higher levels, saying for that he's already begun to complete his Toad Sage training and that those 11 months would be spent with the Toad that he should spend those 11 months on said jutsu and jutsu training. As he nods, his master begins to walk um, towards him. Amino to Izuku, the toads gasp, having seen the man that they have not yet seen in more than over a hundred years, walking towards the boy, before saying that I am very proud of, proud of you. You, were, you really taught me what it was like to have a son. I wish I had had my own when I was grown. When I, um, when I was alive. Surprising Izuku, wondering what his master meant before he began to become pure chakra. Before that chakra would merge with Izuku, giving Izuku all of Jiraiya's memories and his experiences. Also changes, changing his body a bit more. Izuku would understand now. He was, Jiraiya was more than, was just purely a spirit. But he was seemingly able to act, interact with his spirit as if Jiraiya was physically there, which surprised him quite a lot. 
as he was to the told elders, he thanked them, calling them Fukusama, um, Pa and Ma, something that he had not ever done, showing that he had fully adapted Jiraiya. The told sages would begin Izuku's Senjutsu training before sending him home the next day. And the next day would begin the beginning of the anime, except that Izuku would be all well, cups of graduating high school, going into UA as a college rather than a high school. So, <clears throat> anyways, as Midoriya is, inter- um, is in school, his teacher comes in, telling class that they're entering the last couple of mo- the last 10 months of their, well, they're entering their senior year now. Telling them that it's now time for them to choose what they will be doing with their lives. Before throwing the paper saying that I know you all want to be heroes. So there is no point in this stupid test. As everyone shows their quirks. He began to go over everyone's schools before getting to Bakugo. Saying, ah, Bakugo, didn't you want to go to UA? Getting gasped and murmurs about how hard it was to get into UA and the acceptance rate. Only for Bakugo to say not to compare him to said to these extras. As the teacher smiles, he turns the page and sees Midoriya, saying, "Ah, Midoriya, you want to go to UA also." Midoriya hiding himself as well under the um under the cloud of the, I mean under the disguise as a um shy nerdy pervert perverted prankster. Midoriya would sigh away, only for Bakugo to explode in his desk. Midoriya managing to lean his chair back just enough to where the, it does no damage besides just the blast of wind. Midoriya would place himself there, acting as if he was scared. Before the teacher would tell Bakugo to cut it out, that using his quirk in school wasn't allowed. As the day went on, we eventually cut to the end. Midoriya having been taking notes on heroes, something that Jiraiya had actually told him to go for. Saying gathering inf- as much information is what made him such uh, gathering information in multiple ways is what made him such a prominent shinobi. Eventually, Izuku, um, the day would come to an end, and Izuku would go to leave, only for Bakugo and his um, cronies to stop him, telling him to give up on going to UA. He'll be the only person from this use of school to make it there. But surprise when Midoriya grabs Midoriya grabs his hand, squeezing it, telling him to let go. It tells Bakugo that he really think that he was scared of such a foolish kid such as himself. Telling Bakugo to grow up. He would decide before um, before Bakugo would try to explode him, only for Midoriya to angle Bakugo's hand away, causing Bakugo to scorch the wall next to him. As Bakugo, angered, would yell out at Midoriya, Midoriya would look at him, releasing a bit of his killing intent, surprising that of Bakugo and his cronies. Midoriya says that, you know, tells Bakugo that he... It would laugh at Bakugo, say, <laughs> you think you'll be the only one to, from this school to make it into UA. Keep dreaming. You won't be the first and you won't be the last. Miracles happen. Before Midoriya would walk out, once far enough away, he would body flicker away from the building with his backpack. Eventually making it towards an underpass of the bridge, Midoriya would decide to sit there for a minute. Sighing before his keen senses would pick up on on a his uh, more of a sensitive ears thanks to his training would pick up on a noise. Watching that of the um, Midoriya watching the um, yeah Midoriya watching the manhole cover come up would would look at it wondering what had happened only for a sludge like creature to come out. Seeing Midoriya, he would go to attack him. Only surprised when Midoriya essentially vanished in a puff of smoke. Midoriya would appear behind him, but trying to punch it, but the sledge would wrap around him, trying to seep its way into Midoriya's mouth. Midoriya would begin to build a fire chakra into his mouth, his hands still being free, going through three hand signs. Fire style, fireball jutsu, managing to burn off the sledge that was entering into his own mouth, thanks to the technique. The sludge would remove its um 
River moved his tent, its burnt tent, uh, slurs like tendrils from Midoriya before having noticed Midoriya using hand signs, saying, So you have to use your hands to activate your quirk. Quite useless. Before wrapping around Midoriya's hands, keeping them separated, before re entering him and trying to take over his body. As Midoriya noticed this, he decided to um, use uh, especially use um, a certain certain breathing technique to um, to conserve as much oxygen as possible until someone or until someone could come or until he could free himself. Not being able to claw at the um, at that of the sludge, when he would hear the manhole cover come off, he would see a blind man there. The man would rear back his fist before yelling, Texas Smash. I think that's what All Might said. I'm one of, not too keen on remembering what exactly he said in this scene. But like at that moment, it, I know it was either Detroit or Texas Smash. But he was sitting this sludge splatting everywhere, and Midori would down to the ground, where Midori would get breathing heavily. As he has All Might would offer his hand to Midori, Midori would thank, take it, thanking him. Before fanboying over the fact that it was All Might. As All Might um, wore a smile, he began collecting the sludge after drink, chugging down a whole two liter gallon of soda. As Midori would begin asking, would want, um, begin speaking to All Might, All Might would tell Midori that he, though he loves to speak to him, he has to get this man gone. He has to get this man to the police. And would begin to take off, only for him to notice Midori. Well, would take off only for him to notice Midori was holding on. He realized the kid was a lot heavier than he looked. The kid looked scrawny, but he wondered what exactly was happening. The kid, um, All Might would yell at the kid to let go, only for Midori to uh, scream out that he, that he'd injure his foot if he fell down. Now, All Might would say right before eventually making his way to a building, landing on top of the roof. As All Might would tell him what he had done was extremely reckless, Midori would say, "Before you go, I have to speak to you. Ask a question." All Might would tell him to go ahead. Midori would say, "Do you think I can?" But before he can finish. A puff of smoke would have rubbed around All Might, but it wasn't chakra-based smoke, so Midoriya knew it was no ninjutsu. From that would come a skinny, a quite skinny skeleton-looking man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Midoriya's keen observation skills were deduced that this was still All Might. Maybe he had some sort of transformation to his quirk, and this is what he looked like normally. But using observation, seeing how All Might held his body, he could deduce that All Might was injured, possibly missing organs, and that's probably why he looked like this. Midori would ask who did this to his body, surprising All Might. As All Might would say, this, how did you? As Midori says, I've been trained in observing and observing everything in, in my surroundings. And I can clearly see that you're injured, possibly missing organs, but most definitely injured where your stomach should be at. Surprising All Might. As Midori would shake his head before telling All Might, never mind that. He would tell, ask All Might, does he think that he can become a hero with or without a quirk? Without a, knowing that he doesn't have a quirk. All Might would be surprised that the kid, though, was trained still, even though he didn't have a quirk. But would tell All Izuku, no. Said that simply there are some things that heroes do that, well, people without a quirk can't. That there are heroes who fight quirkless. But those heroes remain on uh, and mostly underground. He tells Midoriya is sorry, but he should go um and try and look into becoming well a police officer or a firefighter, saying that they do good work and he respects them the most besides the heroes. They know they're looked down upon by most of society for not being heroes. All mine will see Midoriya clenching his fist before Midoriya would grab the man. Telling him not to say such things that All Might would never say. He would say All Might is supposed to encourage one's dreams, knowing that whether or not, as long as someone was willing to put in the work, they could become strong. Saying that he become strong just off his quirk. No, he gained strong. He got strong through training with his quirk. Saying that before humans, um, <clears throat> before human, before quirks, there was no. There was no heroes. 
There weren't the world was in utter chaos. All Might knows this better than anyone. He's paid attention to history class. The world was in nothing but chaos. There were no quirks, no heroes. He had police officers and firefighters, those who weren't willing those um they were people who were willing to put their lives on the line, even though there were corrupt ones. Telling me telling All Might not saying a quirkless person doesn't become, need to become a hero, can't become a hero, while there were police officers and firefighters who were essentially quirkless, fighting off people with guns, people who could use bombs, very big bombs that could destroy whole cities, taking those down. What makes gives him the right to say such things? Saying that he may not have been born with a quirk, but that would not stop him from becoming a hero. And he's disappointed that his own personal hero, a man he looked up to, as a role model, would say such things. Midoriya would then jump off the building, surprising All Might, as he landed on the ground, cradling it underneath him. Midoriya would look at All Might before walking away. All Might would be shook by the kid. Such strong words from such a strong spirit, and I could just feel his spirit. All Might wondered, could he have been the one? Before he would sigh, knowing that he might not ever see the kid again. But if he did, he'd offer it to him. Before All Might would walk out, but he would take say he would say, Now it's time to get you to the police. Before noticing that the sludge wasn't in his pocket, he would run out the building, going to find it before hearing explosions. As for Midoriya. Midoriya would make his way over towards the explosions quickly. Landing on top of the building, noticing that there was a sludge villain. Surprised, he would remember, he would think that he had not felt the sludge when he had grabbed onto All Might at some point. Some of it, some of it must have fell out of his pocket as they were in the air. Noticing, noticing who it was that was in the sludge, Midoriya would jump down, surprising the heroes. Before Midoriya would run up towards that of the sludge villain. Everyone would then watch as Midoriya would um, Midoriya would reach into a pocket that had been around his leg, before bringing out was that a was that a kunai? Before Midoriya would flick it at the sludge, dispersing it with the strength of what he threw at that point, which was around Bakugo's mouth, causing allowing Bakugo to breathe. Before Midoriya would run up and punch the sludge right in the eye, surprising everyone. Why had no one thought of ta- attacking one of the more prominent features around it? Midoriya would rip Bakugo away with his pure strength alone. As the sludge would go to bat Midoriya away, Midoriya would put up his guard only to feel nothing. Someone would say, kid, what you had done was amazing. And you've expired, inspired me. That's the thing, expired me. You've inspired me. And before All Might would throw his fist back. I believe, I can't remember what he used here. I'm going to say it was um, Detroit Smash, which would clear the the sky and would even splatter the sludge everywhere. This all might would chuckle. Eventually, the pros would run over. They would begin berating Kiziku for doing some, something so reckless after learning that he was quirkless. But, but Kamui Woods would pull him aside, saying that Though Izuku should be, um, he does believe Izuku should be, um, should be prohibited from becoming a hero at a hero school for this action. He's actually quite happy that Izuku did what he did. He's telling Izuku that he has some skill and to not let that skill go to waste, even if it was quirkless. Saying that he'd look into some schools for him if, in case, um, he, in case he ever wants to be a hero and for Izuku to join him sometime. He would love to have him as a sidekick and to train, train with him. Izuku would smile as he thanked Kamui Woods and walked away. Seeing All Might surrounded by that of paparazzi or reporters. As Midoriya um, begins walking home, along the way, Bakuko would come, telling him that he didn't ask him to save him. Midoriya would glance at him before shaking his head and continuing on. Bakuko asking, Are you ignoring me, nerd? Before telling him not to worry, because he'd get to him when they, tomorrow. As Midoriya scoff, a very audible one to Bakugo. Midoriya made his way around the corner as Bakugo walked away. 
not paying attention to anywhere near me where Midori was. As Midoriya began to continue to walk, it eventually, I mean, senses would pick up at something coming towards him at high speeds. Midori would prepare. As someone would appear in front of him, Midori would grab him and flip that person onto the ground. And before bringing Kunai to their face. As Midori realizes it's All Might, he apologizes. All Might surprised that the kid managed to do something like that. Anyways, he's, um, as All Might would say, quite impressive kid, young know, Midoriya. What you did was pretty impressive to flip a man of my size before puffing in a, a smoke coughing up blood. All Might would get up. He would say, how did you do so? I know I was quite fast. And for you to react to me in such speeds would be close to impossible. As Midoriya would tell All Might that he had trained. Trained in um trained in arts lost to human history. As he smiled at um All Might, All Might was shaking his head nonetheless, but would tell Yami Doria that he wishes to offer a proposition. He tells Yami Doria that he has shown him that he can become a hero and that he believes in it, even taking in his words from before. But it was his actions that forced All Might to believe that he could become a hero. Either whether he had a quirk or not. But with that being said, All Might would tell Midoriya that he wishes to offer him a quirk. Midoriya would tell All Might that he's doing pretty well with the with what the abilities he has. When All Might asks abilities, Midoriya sighed before telling All Might it's his secret between him and his sensei. Telling All Might of his sensei was a white haired man. All Might hearing this who Boasted multiple abilities, but all my hearing this begins thinking of all for one. Telling Izuku that whatever that man, before he would say that his name was Jiraiya. Surprising all my says, Oh. As the Yidoriya wondered what was happening, he shook his head and told All Might that his sensei was the only person that had believed in him and had trained him since he was four years old all the way to now, and everything that he knew passed on his techniques to him. He smiled at All Might and he said on the last day that the man trained me, he gave me a gift. Before poofing in a puff of smoke, surprising All Might. Standing there was a much more muscular Midoriya. Brandishing a, um, this is essentially Jiraiya's outfit that we see him in constantly. I can't really even describe it. I know it was like a red vest with like a green, um, a green I don't know what that's called, but you know what I'm speaking of. Telling, um, uh, showing All Might that these were his clothing and that he had passed it on to him. He said he even adopted his master's, master's perverted tendencies and his ability and his tendencies to peek on women. Saying that though he knows it's not, though he knows that it's not all that, um, though there is not all that, um, hero like. He do know that some heroes have different tendencies to cope with what well being heroes. It then tells All Might that um his master he eventually learned on the last day that his master was not normal. His master wasn't even alive. He was a spirit that had trained him, guided him to to his path. He told All Might he wouldn't tell him what he trained him, but he would tell All Might about him, saying that he was a really good man and an honorable one at that. All Might smiles hearing about his master, saying that since his master was not here, he would continue down the path that his master had laid upon, um, laid out for, becoming a hero on his own terms. All Might was sorry before saying that I don't think that that well, kind of answers my question, but not really. But yeah, Midoriya, let me explain to you about my quirk. Though I dodge the question all the time, my quirk is known as one for all. It's a stockpiling and transferable quirk. One that causes it requires one to eat the DNA of a previous user. How this was found out, honestly, I don't know and I don't want to find out. I don't want to think about it. But one for all is a transferable quirk and I would love for you to become the next holder of said quirk. Saying that one for all is a torch passed down between the generations, though it is kept secret from everyone except those closest to the to the wielder or the previous wielder. Telling Midori that he wishes for him to become a successor as the next symbol of peace. Midori would smile at All Might, saying that he would love to accept, but they would have to be on his terms. He tells All Might to keep his quirk for now. 
So it doesn't seem to a transfer. Quirky can quickly deduce that if All Might was to transfer to him now, then simply the case is that, well, All Might's going to get weaker. And seeing as how he only has three hours, those three hours are going to dwindle down until he uses up what's, what's essentially left of the quirk. All Might never thought of this. Who would tell All Might that if he felt himself going to becoming growing too weak to transfer the quirk, that he would glad he would be there to take it on. Saying that if his quirk is stockpile based, if All Might was to show him how he used it, he could note things so that when All Might transfers it to him, even without too much training in the quirk, he should be able to use it efficiently. All Might smiles at Yummy Doyle and tells him that he wishes to train him for the next 10 months, for the 11 months before the UA entrance exams. As he says, you're quite well built, but there's some more training that you can be, that can be had. As, as Yummy Doyle will nod, saying that he does know that. Saying, but for the next eleven months, after school, he'll be he won't be and uh, he won't be here. Rather, he'll be at a place called Mount Miyaboku, which is inaccessible to everyone except for himself. He would tell All Might that there there were giant. It's a land of giant toads, and even well, normal sized toads, obviously, but a land of toads where he undergoes a specialized training that allows him to use the energy that nature produces. And he tells All Might to keep that a secret saying that his power is quite secretive, and if anyone was to learn of it outside of All Might, obviously, since he can keep a secret, then people would hunt him down in hopes of testing the, that power and trying to figure out how to give it to others. It would make villains way too strong in power, and it would also might empower their quirks to the point where they could even take him on, even with a weak, a weak super strength quirk, could probably be comparable to his own with the enhancement of the energy that he uses. I might be surprised to hear such a thing, but he decides that, well, then they'll do specialized training in the morning. As Midoriya nods, he says, very well then. As Midoriya says, well, I might, I have to go. My, my senseis are a bit, um, might miss me, before Midoriya will puff away in a puff of smoke, deciding that he'll speak to his mother later. Over the next couple of 11 months, Midori will undergo rigorous training under both All Might and the Toads, the Toads and Senjutsu, in All Might, and, well, the, uh, I believe it's like the American Dream something, so it was something like that. Anyways, <clears throat> anyways, those 11 months would pass, and, well, it would now be time for the entrance exams. So, um, now that... We move on to the UA entrance exams. Midoriya will be walking towards the entrance exams. And this time, he's not as nervous. Either, rather, he's rather confident. He bypasses a young, a round-faced girl with brown hair. As he smiles at her, giving her a wink. The girl is surprised by this. As he could continue to move on, he's eventually passed by Bakugo, who tells him to move on. Midoriya smiles, not letting Bakugo ruin his mood as he heads within to the UA into the red portion of the UA entrance, UA entrance exams. So, Izuku um, eventually takes the exam and actually passes with rather rather with flying colors. The next time we see Izuku is well when they're preparing for the practical test. Now. Obviously, Ida would still go on to. I, I would still go on to interrupt President Mike, but him. I see Midoriya muttering in such a time. I don't see it happening. It may be a habit he has, but I believe he should be able to, control, to literally control whether he does it or not, or when to realize he's done it or not. So he obviously, I don't think Midoriya would mutter here. So he wouldn't catch the ire of Ida as Midoriya heads out towards the practical, um, towards his city. He sees the um, brown-haired girl that he had passed earlier quite nervous. Midori will walk towards her, only to be stopped by Ida, telling him that is that what he's here for, to discourage that girl, to try to discourage some people from um, from taking the test. Midori would look at it, before looking at his hand and looking back at Ida. Ida getting the message to remove his hand as Midori continued to walk on. Midori would then head over towards that of his of Oraraka, before giving her nice comforting words and telling her to just breathe. It's just simply to just think of it as a normal test. As the girl finally calms down, she thanks Midoriya, and Midoriya 
um, laughs. Eventually, the gates open. Midoriya cries his neck. He takes off, surprising everyone who says that, well, I guess he's going to be disqualified for leaving early. Only for President Mike to say that there was no countdowns in the battle, and they should all head on. Everyone would rush at me after Midoriya, who had already gone into the Hero uh, into the um, city and had already claimed around 20 points. Midori would continue facing many robots, obviously, and over time would decide to calm down when he's claimed at around 56 villain points. He eventually deduces something. From watching this, maybe it's a hero school and what is something that heroes are always doing? Rescuing people and putting their lives on the line for them. So maybe there's another portion to this test. Well, he just have to test this theory. And Midoriya does so by going around helping those who need help. Meeting others like Mineta and even, I think, Jiro was here. And maybe, or even say, um, Shinso. Shin, Shinso. Yeah. So Midoriya would even advise Shinso on how to gain points by shutting the robots off in the back instead. Shinso would obviously thank Midoriya for helping him as he claims himself around, I say, 15 to 20 points before the crowd begins rumbling. Everyone begins to run away, but Midoriya, he sits there as he begins running towards the rumbling, hearing some screaming coming from wherever the direction is coming from, whatever this thing is. When he finally looks up to see, he sees a giant robot. It must be the Zero Pointer. Midoriya would make a Shadow Clone. Everyone was watching as the boy split off into two people. Another version of the boy appeared in a puff of smoke. Before the Shadow Clone would go and help the girl, vacating her from the area. Before Midoriya himself would jump up in the air. Landing, uh, flying high enough to where he could make an old Dama Rasengan. Creating the Rasengan, Midoriya would then slam it directly into the zero point of the head, going through it as well, drilling, essentially drilling through its head as it exploded. Coming out of the back of the head, Midoriya would stick to the zero pointer with his chakra and would begin running down it until he eventually got um, low enough to where he could jump off without any harm to his body. Everyone seeing this would would be in awe of what he had just done. Before they would hear President Mike proclaim that the exam was over. So, with the entirety of the entrance exams now covered, we move on to the live period in between the entrance exams and the start of the way. Now, during two week time skip two weeks after the end of it. Yes, Midoriya does uh, did save Uraka. Yes, he was still injured, and yes, they still did encounter. Oh, uh, not Mount Lady. Uh, they did still encounter that of uh, recovery girl. And, um, Uraraka was still healed by her. But, after that, Izuku would head home. And two weeks later, obviously, at the start of this time skip, Izuku would receive the letter. His mother would come rushing in, saying that it was here. Izuku would nod, taking it from his mother before entering his room, where he would sit and he would watch it. As it came on, well, as it, well, open it and as it came on, revealing, no, no, damn, as he opened it, it to be a disc. The disc then turned on, revealing a hologram of All Might. All Might would apologize for not speaking to him in the past two weeks before, proclaiming that he was the newest staff member of UA, and that he had to keep it a secret from everyone until it was publicized. Well, until he, it was publicly announced, which is technically around now. He would tell Izuku that he scored around 56 villain points but, um, but, and that would be enough to pass, getting him into class 1B had he gotten just that. With his abilities. But, because of Izuku's selflessness and the other abilities he showcased, he actually gained extra points. Seeing it, what type of hero school would it test on how heroic someone was. So, explaining to Izuku about that of these rescue points. Something Izuku that he got a total of 75. Izuku would then um, realize that he got a total of 131, which All Might would confirm. All Might would tell Izuku, welcome to your Hero Academia. And before I go, you rate number one in terms of top scores. He would then also inform Midoriya that he would be in class 1A and that the classes would start, I think they started in around April. So... 
during this time. Izuku, during that time, Izuku would have, after this time, Izuku would meet up with All Might, the two of them would have a conversation, and All Might would nod with Midoriya. Um, Rebel would speak with Midoriya and would essentially tell him that he wishes him good luck. And again, he was sorry for just essentially ghosting him this whole, this whole time. Midoriya would say not to worry about, not to worry too much about it before the time skip again to the beginning of the way. Izuku would be leaving home as his mother um, told him that she was so proud of him. And she also then proclaimed that he was so cool. Izuku smiled before telling his mother thank you as he left. Izuku looked around before vanishing in a body flicker jutsu. Appearing outside, eventually body flickering to that of UA, he would appear to be, it would appear as if he had appeared just outside of that of the you a um, entrance in a puff of smoke. Izuku realized that that puff of smoke was too much of a tail, and he needed to master the body flicker technique. He had since he had Jiraiya's memories, he learned of Jirai, um of a kid named Shisui the teleporter, whose body flicker seemed seamless and didn't emit a smoke, didn't emit smoke or specialized effects. But he could also implement different effects. Just, just for flashing, just for the flashiness of it. So Izuku would decide to continue. He decides to take up his training. Izuku would head inside of Uwe, where he would be met by Ida and Oraka. Ida having been, you know, berating Bakugo for putting his foot on the ground, on the table, and essentially disrespecting um, the school, and Oraka who had just entered. Or- same time as he did, or after him. As they began, continued to talk, eventually Aizawa would make himself known, but it didn't shock Midoriya like it did the rest of the class, surprising Aizawa. The kid has exceptional uh, s- exceptional awareness of his, uh, his around, surrounding, uh, surroundings. This is a surrounding awareness, but I don't think that's a thing. Anyways, Izuku, uh, Aizawa, not Izuku, Aizawa would then tell class and it took them too long getting quiet before telling them to put on their gym uniforms and to meet them outside. As everyone gets dressed, many ask Midoriya about well <clears throat> about how he got so jacked. Bakugo being surprised. Midoriya had always seemed, you know, so skinny, but to see him like this, it made Bakugo wonder. Had he been training this whole time? Or was it just the past couple of months that he'd been training? But to receive a physique like that, it looked as if he had been training his entire life. Anyways, Izuku, Izuku, um, Izuku would then sit there as, um, well, would leave, discussing that he had been training since he was four. But f- anyways, as Izuku, um, makes, and everyone makes their way out towards that of the um, well, the testing area, Aizawa would tell them that they're going to be doing a quirk apprehension test. This surprises everyone as they wonder what about orientation. Aizawa would say that UA gives their teachers the freedom to do whatever they want with their class, pretty much. And if they want to go to the um, damn, orientation, then they can just go to general ed, general ed instead. So... He would then throw a ball at Midoriya, telling me, say, Midoriya, you had the highest score. Um, anyways, Izuku would try, he would ask what was his softball throw. Izuku would say he never really tested, saying that he was already superbly strong. His body was extremely strong on its own, saying that he could lift large toads. And everyone wondered, what did, what did he mean by large toads? Midoriya shrugged before activate um, before encasing his hand in chakra. Everyone would be surprised to see the boot energy cascading around his hand. Izuku <clears throat> would then uh, everyone would then watch uh when chakra pick up around said arm before uh Izuku would throw the arm, it being cascaded by a blast of wind, reaching around nine hundred and fifty fifty eight meters. I don't know how long that is, so I'm going to see in terms of miles and feet. It's 
properly around that of a hundred. It's it's a thousand and forty seven yards. In terms of feet, it's three thousand one hundred and forty three point zero four feet or foot, and in terms of miles, it's kilometers is point nine five eight. Obviously, because apparently a thousand meters equals a kilometer. Kilometer. Anyways, moving on, everyone will be quite surprised at that. Before me, Dory will say, huh, I ain't even add too much power to it. Although the, that ability is a bit hard to control. As me, Dory will place his hands behind his back before walking over towards the rest of the class. Bakugo, however, would be seething. Had Deku lied to him this whole time. Had he had a quirk the entire time? Was, what was that energy and then the wind? What was that? As so, um, would then tell everyone, um, when he hears them exclaiming how fun this was going to be, would then say whoever got last place would be expelled. We move on throughout this. Izuku, honestly, dominates every single category, except I say maybe side to side steps, but honestly I can see him either coming in first or second. It's a if fifty fifty on that portion. In terms of stamina, has high ch- high enough chakra reserves and his body is not as like shinobi like as as adapted chakra as needy of chakra as the people of the Shinobi world. So while he can still use chakra and can die from chakra exhaustion, if he gets too low on chakra, he does still have his own ad he, his body, well, he could die. Anyways, Izuku was, um, coming pretty much, would come in first place. Now, I did, I was talking about how his chakra would not, um, affect his, 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 like, glow and glow on reserves would not affect his stamina or his body all too much, as it does the same way as, um, as the shinobi from the Naruto world. That's essentially what I was trying to say. I just... It, it was just hard to explain at the point at that time, but anyways, Izuku come in first place, surprising well pretty much no one. Everyone seeing how much of a powerhouse Midoriya was with whatever his quirk was. They see him lead long distances, break um break a grip strength test. They saw him um run even longer than someone who was on a literal moped. It was, and he was extremely flexible for some weird reason. It was mind-boggling to them how someone could be so well-rounded, but it didn't matter all that much. At the end, Aizou would reveal that no one would be expelled. From here, we move on to the next couple of days when they were finally ready for their hero, um, um, for their training in the heroics, in heroics, when. I saw it went leave. Well, I think it was President Mike. They would wonder who their new heroics teacher was. Izuku being one of the few people who actually got All Might. Would um, I think he was actually the only person who got All Might that um wasn't in um a second year or so, a second or third year. Um, Izuku would think when would All Might show up? But as he thought that All Might would come in, saying, "I am here, coming through the door like a normal person." Everyone would go wild for All Might, but for he would tell them to calm down. Say, um, before telling them that they should get dressed in their hero costume. After all, the clothes with the pros. <clears throat> he then presses a button, and everyone um goes and grabs their gear. Midoriya grabs his own box, which was made from this, which was actually given. The skill was given to him by the Toad Elders. Izuku would head out and would get. Um, changed immediately. Now you may ask, what exactly does Daku wear? Now you should see a PNG on the screen of a younger-looking Jiraiya, not kid Jiraiya, but a younger one. Izuku would simply wear that. The Jiraiya's, the the uh, I think this was the Joni style clothing for the Second Shinobi War that Jiraiya wore in this flashback against his fight with Hanzo and meeting the um the tr- the Rain Trio. Who were the um, creators uh, like y- Yaiko, Nagato, and Konon? That is essentially what he wears, except he doesn't have the Konoha leaf headband. But, yes, no, because he has no, he himself honestly has no ties to Konoha. He rather he has Jiraiya's horned 
oil headband. Um, headband that has the kanji for oil on it instead. And it would be in a black cloth rather than Jiraiya's iconic red. Though he does have an alternative style to his costume, which is essentially Jiraiya's clothing. Izuku, once everyone would get dressed and would meet out, everyone would, would, um, would comment on each other's before looking at Midoriya's. Midoriya would wonder what everyone was looking at him for before they would say it's quite a bit old-fashioned and doesn't even look modernized. And what's in those pouches on Midoriya? Midoriya would reveal that these pouches contained scrolls, shuriken, and kunai, and on the back was the toad, the scroll of the toad, um, of the toad clan. Midoriya well, would say that he was trying to become a shinobi, and that's exactly what his outfit um, shows. Therefore, All Might would explain to everyone they would be doing battle trials. Midoriya would get a sort of feeling that someone was staring at him with the intentions to do harm. Turning around, he would see that it was Bakugo, snarling and smiling. Glaring and smiling while smiling at him. Midoriya would turn around and All Might would then say that um, they would choose partners through lots. And Izuku would be stuck with... Um, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna have it be Uraraka. I'm gonna have it for the sake of the ship. I think I'm gonna have it. No, nope. whether I won't discuss the ship actually. But this was who Deku was gonna end up with in the end of the what if. I'm not going to really go into their love story or anything like that. So the ship will be Izuku X Momo. Izuku. I actually been reading a lot of fanfics, and I actually like the Izuku X Momo ship. Not, I don't think I like it more than the Uraraka X Deku shit, but it's good to change things up every once in a while. So, Deku would be partnered with Momo. Deku would say perverted things and would even write in a book, which Momo would question him about. Midoriya would say that this book well, was um, his legacy to his master, saying that these was his last master's books and that he planned to um, publish them. He says that they're more of a for a mature audience. Which Momo doesn't get, and she probably won't get until these books are published. Eventually, All Might tells them that they'll be facing Bakugo and Ida. And with the two of them, they will, with the, the group of four, would then head off towards a building where the villains would get five minutes to prepare. Izuku would then tell Momo not to worry, and that he has a plan. Momo would then watch as Izuku would bite his thumb before smearing the blood on his palm. He would then go through many different hand gestures before slamming it on the ground as these weird ink-like markings appeared. The ink-like scribbles would appear, and from it would come out. Was that a toad? The toad would open his mouth as Midoriya told Momo to get in. Momo looked at him like he was stupid, asking, huh? As Midoriya says, the toad can carry, well, people inside of its body before demonstrating by getting inside of the toad, and it didn't even seem uncomfortable. He would then get out once more, showing Momo that he actually could. Momo would be surprised, wondering if it could handle two people being in there, and as you could say, it very well could. The two of them would get in, Momo creeped out by it a bit, as Izuku through the toad's eyes would guide it, as All Might starts the battle. Bakugo... We'd run down the hallway, abandoning Ida to face Deku. He would come across the toad, but wondered how it got in here, as he knew Suyu wasn't on ba Midoriya's team. As the toad bypassed him, Bakugo would search through the entire bottom floors for Deku, but when he couldn't find him, he wondered what exactly was going on. Midoriya and um, Momo would make their way into the, build into the room with the bomb and Ida. Ida surprised that a toad managed to get in here. He would go to pick it up, only for a fist to come out of its mouth, hitting Ida directly in his face, breaking the mask that he had. Only for Midoriya and Momo to come out, as Midoriya and as Momo then shoots uh, um, a gun with um, that he shoots out a what is it called? A sort of string. It's like um, a sort of wire that wraps around Ida, constricting his body to the same. Once they do so, Midoriya then touches the bomb, securing it with a seal, saying that now the and the bomb will poof away in a puff of smoke, revealing a scroll where it was. Midoriya will pick up the will pick up that of the scroll, 
That's how I'm able to say the hero team wins. Now that the hero team have won, all I would ask Midori for him to uh, do whatever he can to wherever he set the bomb to bring it back. Midori would open the scroll and would run Chakaku through bringing the bomb back. Bakugo would run upstairs, angered, looking at Deku, asking him how did he get past them. When Ida would explain that Midoriya and Momo had came out of the mouth of that toad that was still there, Midori would say simply because the toad allowed him to trend. He could... The, to, to, the soul was a mode of transportation that any, up, I say up to five people at most could fit inside of that toad, before asking if they wanted to ride back. Bakugo didn't believe it, but Ida decided to trust Midoriya, and with Momo, Ida, and Midoriya there, while Bakugo, that was, while my, my Midoriya and um, them both go away, Bakugo sits there, seething as all might ask him if he's alright. Bakugo explodes the earpiece, surprising All Might, who holds his ear in a bit of pain. Eventually, Bakugo and everyone, and Midoriya, would, and then would make it back to the um, to the um, viewing area where they would come out of the toll, surprising everyone, including Suyu. Midoriya would then tell them everyone to get back before spraying a jet of water out of his mouth onto. Um, Ida and Momo clearing off the gunk or the um the slime that the toad's belly um potentially placed on them so that they can slip in and out of it. Everyone would ask Izuku how did exactly did he do the things he did? I mean Doria says that it was a trade secret, his own personal secret that he would take to the grave if necessary. Which surprised everyone. Anyways, Midoriya and would watch as everyone else would go. And at the end of the day, would leave, but would be stopped by Bakugo, who would ask what gives him the right to hide his quirk this whole time. Midoriya would ask what gives the Bakugo, the, what makes Bakugo think he has the right to know whether he had abilities or not, saying that Bakugo stopped being his friend the moment he started bullying him, which denied him access to any and all of Izuku's secrets. So had they remained friends for all of these years, he would have gladly have told Bakugo, but now that that's past. And he doesn't care. After everyone goes through the battle trials, we will all head back to class. And the next couple of days would go by before they would see Aizawa once again. Before, I no, not see Aizawa once again, but before Aizawa would talk to them about it. Stating how he had finally gotten to review the footage. He would tell me, Joy, that was an excellent use of usage. That was an excellent plan. Most people wouldn't think that a full two people could ever fit inside of a small toad like that. Before he would continue on telling Bakugo that his grudge against Midoriya, whatever it was, made him think irrationally and to just bypass the toad, seeing that he more than likely would have let another person bypass him had they not been Midoriya. Anyways, I was all within to class, but not to worry. He would then say, but what they were going to do next would decide the rest of their fate as high as and the hero course. This was, a, well, as high schoolers. Everyone would wonder, was this another test? Before he would say, you'd be choosing the class president. Now, I'm not going to go over this. Obviously, Izuku would be chosen. And honestly, I think Izuku would run very well, more efficiently than Ida. You guys forget that Jiraiya is Konoha resident spy master. Um, residential spy master. So... He's really good at gathering information and more than likely has contacts everywhere, which means he knows how to lead an information ring. Or, you know what I'm trying to I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say. But, um, so I see Izuku managing to pick up on Jiraiya's abilities to lead and, well, the rest will be history. Throughout the time, they went to lunch and even had an event with the press. Though T um though Izuku managed to help T uh, Tenya uh managed to help Ida um calm down the rest by throwing him at the sign rather than Ida having to use Uraraka. Ida smashing into the wall above the sign managed to catch everyone's attention as he told them that it was the press before um and before falling down to the ground where someone would surprisingly catch him. Next um, day after this event, the class would be heading out, having to go on a field trip to a place known as the USJ, whatever that was. Most people thought they were going to the Universal, Universal Studios Japan, but apparently not. 
Anyways, as Izuku continued, um, as Izuku and his class made it onto the bus and to the USA, they would be met there by Pro Hero 13. Who would surprise them? Anyways, as they arrive there and get the same lecture from 13 about how to use their, how they should be careful how they use their quirks, they would eventually make it in. But Izuku's trained instinct and from Jiraiya's own experience with his, his body, Izuku would tell out that something was up. They weren't alone. This would then would when most of the lights would dim, surprising everyone. As Aizawa asked 13 if this was part of it, 13 would shake her head as a purple portal would open. Midoriya would narrow his eyes as Izuku, uh, Iz- as he looks at where the purple, por- uh, purple, where the purple portal or mist-like thing was. He would watch as countless villains would walk out, spreading throughout the zones. Aizawa would tell the class to stay back and for someone to go alert the teachers. Izuku would tell Ida that this was an order to go now. He doesn't need Ida to second think. Go. Ida would leave immediately. Being um, this being much faster because Ida didn't want to, didn't put up a fight from Midoriya with Midoriya, he would leave immediately to go um, to go and say um, get the teachers. Izuku would tell the class to be prepared. Something was coming before Izuku was um, would bite her thumb before everyone would watch and speedily write something on the ground. As a per- man in a purple mist would appear. Everyone would watch as Izuku would slam his hand in the ground before the line, the script, the inscriptions or scribbles that or blood ink that Izuku had used would then stretch out towards the man before spreading out in a circle around him with a certain, a different like layout before the man would freeze. His quirk seemingly vanished. Thirteen saw the person who was underneath. Izuku would then watch as um, everyone would watch as the man would stand there asking what did he do before screaming in pain as he, as he could only through force of will did he move his hands up to his head as he screamed in pain. Izuku realizing that he was having a mental breakdown. He wondered what exactly would happen. Izuku would then loosen up that of the seal causing the mist to appear around him, clouding his face. As he watches the person he held half of the head, Izuku, um, the person telling him to help him and to not let, trans- let him transform back into that misty person, please. But before anything, eventually the seal would break from, Jirai- from Naruto, from Izuku loosening it. And then... Did miss Kirigiri reform. He would immediately still send everyone else away. Izuku into the water conflagration zone. Or the um the flood zone. Yes, that's what it's called. It was the flood zone. And would send Izuku there. As he lands in the water, he's actually a pretty excellent swimmer. So swimming up to shore and a lot faster than most other people could naturally do, or even some faster than some quirks who gave them at um um, that could that help them swim quite fast in the water. Izuku would make it to the boat before jumping up there, up to the top, where he would see Tsuyu and Mineta join him moments later. Seeing that there were villains surrounding them, Midoriya would tell ask Mineta if if he was to create a warp text to su- to suck all of the villains into the middle. Could Mineta send in his pop his balls to um? His quirk down uses quirk to stick them all together. Mino would say sure before Midoriya would say good before jumping down to the water. Suyu and Mineta being awe, seeing Midoriya stand on top of it before sticking his hands in. Before they would watch. Uh, anyways, Izuku would obviously um seeing um afterwards. Izuku would jump away. Watching as Mineta, well, as the um, whirlpool created by him, essentially cre- doing the process of creating a Rasengan, but not completely creating a Anyways, Izuku would watch as Mineta's pop off balls would um, stick all the villains together as they were sucked into the center. Smirking at his plan, 
Izuku would eventually make his way towards Minata and Tsuyu on the boat before Izuku would carry the two of them on the water towards the coast. As they arrived there, they began to silently watch, but when Izuku saw the Nomu uh, continuously hurting her razor head, Izuku managed, uh, disappeared, appearing in front of it with a kick directly to its face. Like his shin literally went into the center of the Nomu's face, sending it flying back, surprising Shigaraki that someone can send Nomu back like that. Shigaraki was like, You're che- he's cheating. Before Izuku would ask, um, would ask Aizawa if he was alright. Izuku would pick up Aizawa before vanishing in a body for their technique. It was silent, no puff of smoke. It just seemed as if he just vanished or teleported. Izuku would then appear on the railing with the rest of the students with Aizawa before making his way back down. As he did so, he asked, how did they want to do this? Shigaraki would tell the Nomu to get back here to kill this brat. The Nomu came and went to punch Izuku, surprising when Izuku grabbed his hand and redirected him before delivering a kick to the back of his um back of its head. Izuku would then touch the ground as he uh well would go through his as he then went through um touched the ground and said swamp of the underworld. Watching as the Nomu sank into the ground before the ground around it solidifies. All the way up to its head. Shigaraki would be surprised. Telling the Nomu to. But before he could do anything. Midoriya would with roll. A, is that a kunai? With a, with paper on it? Right in front of the Nomu. Before watching as the kunai and the paper. Well the paper sizzled and exploded. Exploded with the Nomu. Exploded its head more specifically. But it would be surprising to Midoriya when the Nomu's head would regenerate in its entirety. Seeing what he now has to do, he must seal it away. Izuku would then tell Shigaraki, well, say goodbye to your Nomu, before three other Izukus would appear in a rectangle-like formation. Earth-style mud wall. As they slam their hands into the ground, a rectangle-like box of a mud wall would appear. Izuku would merge into the wet wall, passing through it using the headhunter jutsu. Or the highly like a mole technique. It's either or. But he would manage to get in with the Nomu. Before Izuku would then go through many more hand signs. Stopping. He would then shout Kuchiyo's Gamaguchi Shibari. Or, or the ninja art told mouth trap. Watching as or the told mouth find. <clears throat> Izuku, this is this is the same jutsu Jiraiya used against Itachi and Kisame to conceal them, and it's literally unbreakable unless you have literally the flames of Amaterasu. I may Amaterasu, or I say maybe Susano, or you could manipulate space time, which we do know the Nomu can't. Shigaraki would wonder what he was doing to his Nomu before Midori would walk up to the Nomu. The Nomu and him being separated from the outside meant no sound could come in, and therefore the Nomu could not be commanded. Izuku would draw many seals as the Nomu stood there, unmoving. Before he would say seal, as he slammed his hands on the end point, the Nomu would then be compressed into a sealing scroll. It would be sealed into the seals, which is then transferred to a sealing scroll. Izuku would dismiss the jutsu and the earth wall technique, and the earth mother wall his clones would disperse. Watching as Izuku walked out, the, uh, the, ju- the clones and everything would disperse in a puff of smoke, and the earth mother wall would sink into the ground. Izuku would walk, putting a scroll in his pocket. As Shigaraki asked where was his nomu, Izuku said, gone, and he would never get him back. Shik- Tomura would scratch his neck before Kirigi would tell Tomura it was now. But before Kirigi could do anything, the doors would burst open, revealing All Might. Kirigi seeing this is tell Midoriya this would not be the last stuff they see of them, before warping him and uh, Shigaraki away. We then time skip to after everything was concluded, with the rest of the students taking on the villains there, and All Might helping them instead of having to face the normal. After the USJ, 
Detective Sukachi, 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 I should say Sukachi, Sukachi would then approach Izuku before asking him what happened to the Nomu as it was called. Izuku would then brandish a scroll telling, um, telling Sukachi that the Nomu was intact and right inside of the scroll, surprising Sukachi as Midoriya rolled it out. He would ask me, he would, Midoriya would say that he would be necessary to release it so wherever they wanted to hold the Nomu to make sure that he was there so that he could release it. Otherwise, here. Izuku would then, um, would then tell Sukachi to come here before bringing out an ink, <clears throat> an ink and a brush before writing scribbles on Sukachi before, um, he would stick the summoning scroll to it on Sukachi's skin before adding chakra, watching as the uh, scroll disappeared in a puff of smoke. He would say that so that no one could ever take the scroll for Sukachi until it was time to be released, saying that he would have he would work up many more seals to make sure that the Nomu could not escape no matter what. But for now, this would have to do as Sukachi could be the only person who can trust to transport it as he's heard from Almighty quite the trustful man. Sukachi would nod, thanking for thanking Midoriya, and everyone would move on. A couple of days later. School would start up again, and once there, Aizawa would make himself known. He wasn't as injured as Cannon, but he would tell this class that their battle was yet to be over. As everyone wondered what exactly would happen if there were more villains, Aizawa would then tell them that now it was time for the sports festival. Saying that it was in two weeks and they had the entire two weeks to train, Midori would spend this time coming up with new seals. With the studying of how quirks work and his knowledge on quirks, he would manage to come up with not only a quirks of person seal, but a space time seal, which would seal away something within a certain space time, making it seem as if it was like they were physically there, but they were separated through a space time barrier. Izuku, with these new seals, would manage to come to Tsukachi, who had called him at before uh, the day before the sports festival. Izuku would be there as Tsukachi asked him that they were not prepared for the Nomu. Izuku would tell them to hold on just a moment that he needs to make sure that this was this would work. Izuku would then um everyone would then watch as Izuku would place his hand on Tsukachi on the. Tattoo before the tattoo would be absorbed, and from it would puff out the scroll. Izuku would lay the scroll in the center before puffing out the Nomu. The Nomu just standing there, not moving. The Nomu would be placed with quirk suppressing cups before Midori would place para para um, paralyzing seals all around. Four paralyzing seals meant to being um, sent at their strongest level. He would then use the space time seal and the quirk seal to seal away the Nomu there, before transferring the key to Sukachi, saying that to only give it to his police officers who could understand how it worked. And he'll exp and the instructions are within the scroll on how that this works specifically. Sukachi would not thank Midoriya before Midoriya would vanish, revealing to be a shadow clone. We cut to the um US uh, the Sports Festival as everyone is in the locker room being prepared, getting prepared for it. As Shoto Todoroki appear um walks to Midoriya. As he calls his name, Izuku looks up. Todoroki would then say that you by far have the most interesting of abilities. You have a wide range. You can manipulate Earth, you can create clones, weird energy uh, energy balls. You could manipulate wind, fire, and even summon toads. And you could even, what is it called, seal things away. That by far makes you the most dangerous potential hero there is. And mean, and places your potential at high levels. But make this be, let this be known. I will defeat you. And but plus, not to mention your relationship with All Might. Whatever that is. Indoria would chuckle before patting Todoroki on his back extremely hard, before saying good luck trying to beat him with just his ice quirk, and even if his fire quirk, saying that neither will work on him. So, ooh, my bad for that voice crack. So there was really nothing for him to worry about. 
as Izuku will move on, everyone would eventually come collect into the center of the sports festival arena where Midnight would go over the rules before they would decide the first event. Once explaining the rules of the first event and everything, they would all prepare for the obstacle course. Izuku would be in the back. Once everyone begins running through that of the t- tunnel, once the, t- rest the test begin, Izuku would manage to make it out before biting his thumb. He would then slam his thumb on the ground as he then yelled out, Summoning Jutsu. The crowd would go wild as they see the giant puff of smoke would be Izuku standing on the top giant orange frog, saying, Gamakichi, I'm gonna need your help for this. As Gamakichi would nod before, he would begin jumping through the obstacle course of and Izuku would burn away Todoroki's eyes as he tried to free Gamakichi. Gamakichi would clear the, the fall and the entire minefield in a single jump, getting Izuku to the entrance or to the exit of it quite fast. Izuku would then hop down as he dismisses Gamakichi before then, well, <clears throat> running through it, or simply walking through it. Izuku. Izuku would now um, would walk through quite nonchalantly. There's a mic proclaiming to everyone that Izuku Midoriya had come in first place. Anyways, we begin with the second portion of, well, with everyone coming back from the obstacle course. Todoroki coming in second and Bakugo in third. Once the 42nd student would pass, Midnight would declare the race over and for everyone to take a shortcut back to the stadium, where they would then have an intermission before beginning the second round, that being a cavalry battle. Now, honestly, I don't see it changing all that much and whose who's team is whose, so it's going to be Izuku, Hatsume, um, Uraraka, and Tsukuyomi, or oh, not Tsukuyomi. Tokoyami. I think that, yeah, that's his name. Tokoyami. With those four on the team, honestly, they would do quite well, defending themselves against Todoroki. Anyways, um, as they be, they do defend themselves quite well with Izuku. Now, actually, I don't see Izuku being the one that's on top, rather. I see it being Oraraka. Izuku being up at the bottom to carry would be allow him to perform techniques such as the Earth style mud wall, which allows him to erect a barrier around his team when needed, and he needs to have contact with the ground to do so. And also using fireball jutsus to uh, or fire style jutsus to combat Todoroki's eyes. In the end, I honestly don't see um see them losing their headband. So Izuku's team would come out in first place. It would move on to the third round, where fourteen over sixteen people would fight in a one on one tournament. Now all the events between the cavalry battle and before the one on one tournaments began, such as Ojiro and the other kid giving up, still happened with um with Ibarra and Tatu Tatu taking their place. And Izuku and everyone would find out their matches. Izuku versus Shinso. Todoroki versus Ida. Um, Uraraka versus Bakuko. Momo versus Minata. Suyu versus... Um, no, not Suyu. Mina versus Aoyama. Ida versus Hatsume. Ibarra versus Dami- Kaminari. Tetsu Tetsu versus... Ki- I think Kirishima. And... um. I think that's the, those are all the matches actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, so everyone else's match will go as canon, but we'll discuss Deku's match. As Deku makes his way to the arena, people will begin cheering as he has shown that he can be dominant in terms of well, in showing of the previous rounds. Um. So every as he makes his way into the arena, and then I starts the match. And so we began goading him, trying to get him to, you know, well, very much, trying to get him to, to um, act, um, get him caught within his work. 
and would tell him how great it must be for Midoriya to be born with such a well-rounded and heroic quirk. As Midoriya responds, he tells him so, but he feels something like Genjutsu spread over his body. Midoriya begins to build up his chakra, sitting it out in a wide surge, surprising Shinzo as Midoriya's blank eyes turn back to normal. Midoriya would say, as I was saying, I have not trained as a hero, but as a shinobi, a ninja, assassins of the night. I am not just becoming a hero. I'm going to protect as much as I can, do as much as I will. And me having a hero with quirk has nothing to do with it. Without my quirk powers, I'd, I'd be very well in terms of my technical skills. Before he look at Shinso. Now, you want to try and hypnotize me? Let me show you true hypnotism. Well, well no. You want, I don't think he uh, dry knows that many genjutsus that can be used. So, rather than summoning Ma Pa, Izuku would then bite his thumb before summoning a battle toad, which would then use its tongue to wrap around Shinso and drive him into the ground, knocking him unconscious. Everyone would cheer for Midoriya, as Midoriya tells Shinzo that he's had years to train his body to be used with intended with his quirk. There are pretty there are a lot of heroes who don't have well combat based quirks, and Shinzo not taking the opportunity to train his body so that he doesn't so that he can be just like them was his own fault, no one else's. Before Midoriya would walk away. We then move on to the next round, Mamie Doria versus Todoroki. During the time between the first and second round, Midoriya and Todoroki still have their same icon, their same talk about Todoroki and how he came to be, and even talk to Endeavor. But when Midoriya laughed at Endeavor, calling him a foolish man and a terrible father, it quite surprised the number two, who said that he'd do anything and ruined his life for such disrespect. Midoriya would simply walk past him. Continue, continuously chuckling. As we move on to the second round, Midoriya would line up against Todoroki. When midnight begins the match, Midoriya would immediately jump out of the way. Watching as Todoroki had planned on, well, had planned on uh, sitting him out in the arena with a blast of ice. Mindora was a Todoroki trying this on for size. Earth style. Swamp of the underworld. Before everyone would watch as the ground underneath would turn into well, a swamp like, um, a muddy like swamp. Before Todoroki would begin sinking into it, surprising everyone. Mindoria would then rush over the, would then rush over that of the mud before kicking Todoroki. And then delivering a punch. Todoroki would send Midoriya back, freezing over the, the mud and breaking through the ice, allowing him to freeze himself. Not to freeze himself, to free himself. Midoriya would smile, telling Todoroki that he's done quite well, before saying, but this was going to be it. Therefore, everyone would watch as blue energy would wisp into Midoriya's hand before forming a rotating spear. Rasengan, he would say, before rushing at Todoroki. Todoroki would use his ice to shoot it at, would shoot his ice at Midoriya, only for Midoriya to plow through it. Midoriya would tell Todoroki that his only chance of defeating him, well, his only increase in chance of defeating him is to use his fire. But not to worry because he has a counter to that as well. As Midoriya continued plowing through the ice with the Rasengan towards, towards Todoroki, Todoroki being well, pushing slowly, being climbing back the whole time, would be closing in on the edge and would be about to step out of the arena. As Midoriya's hand plowed through the next burst of ice, but would grab Todoroki before then just pushing him out, watching as Todoroki fell on his butt. Nidori would smile before telling Todoroki ooh, <clears throat> before telling Todoroki to come visit him later and then he'd and he'd make sure to straighten out his whole ideal 
idea that his quirk was his own father's and not his own. The next round would be consisting of Izuku versus Ida. Now, Ida would automatically try to use his speed, um, would try to use a reciprocal burst to take out Midoriya quickly in a quick fashion, knowing that he could not go blow for blow with Midoriya. Ida's kicks were powerful, but Midoriya was strong enough to withstand, was durable enough to withstand it. He would then tell um, Ida, you, you uh, maybe your leg strength is probably pretty much the only thing that's good about you. You, you could incorporate speed-based punches, using your quirk to speed you up as you punch someone. That would increase the amount of force you would exert in your punches, making them a lot stronger. But you choose not to do so. That is a mistake. As Midoriya grabs Ida, he flips him over. Ida gets up, and realizing that he has to stall. For, he his um his engines have stalled, and he has to buy time. Going kick for kick with Midoriya, kick um kick for kick with Midoriya. Midoriya blocking his, and Ida blocking Midoriya's own. Midoriya was smart, telling Ida he's going to give him a second chance at using his quirk, which is why he's letting him continue. As Midor as Ida finally um quirk be into the stall, Ida would go to use his quirk and to land a kick on Midoriya. Everyone watches Midoriya go through six set of hand seals. Before screaming. Hardy Jizo. Everyone would watch as Midoriya's long hair would then curl around him before producing many sharp spikes. Ida would kick into a doom. Massive damage to his leg. As he would hold it, Midoriya would um, then use the... Um, I can't remember what this Zutu's name was, but I believe it was the Wild Lion's main technique. Um, if I'm looking at it correctly, that's how you pronounce it. Or the... Hell no, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Thing. He would use it to bind Ida. Telling him to give up, saying that his leg was pretty injured and he wouldn't be able to walk on it unless he went to recovery. And if he, um, recovery girl, and if he continued to fight for longer, he'd probably lose the leg. Ida would give up as Midoriya would unbind him before placing him on the, um, placing him on the, um, gurney that the med bots would bring, um, would have so that he could go to recovery girl. And I will proclaim him the winner, saying that Midoriya was going to the second, the final round. Bakugo would beat Tokoyami, and then we move on to the finals. Izuku versus Bakugo. Bakugo would sneer at, uh, would sneer at Deku, saying that this damn, ner- saying that finally I get to put you in your place, you damn nerd. Before Midoriya, who are small at it, saying that he could try, but we all know that he would not. As Midoriya goes into the waiting room, as does Bakugo, eventually Midnight will call out for the two of them. As he does the last call for Midoriya, everyone would then watch as Midoriya would appear um, in a shower, a tornado of leaves, of wind and leaves. As Midoriya stood there, looking at Bakugo, Midnight will start the match before Midoriya <clears throat> would summon a toad. This being Gamariki. Midoriya would then use the water release water gun jutsu, spewing water at um, the two I'm um, doing a collaboration jutsu with Kamariki. He would spew the water at that of Bakugo, pushing him back a tremendous, um, a tremendous, um, um, back with a tremendous amount of force. Bakugo would use his explosions to send him to the side of the technique, allowing him to not continuously be hit with it, before he would then use the toad oil bullet against Bakugo, coating him in oil. Bakugo would ask what was this before Midoriya would tell Bakugo that he is victory, telling Bakugo that he would not ignite this quirk if he was him. Bakugo would say, yeah, why? Before igniting his quirk, as everyone watches as Bakugo caught a flame, Bakugo would begin screaming in pain before Midoriya would say, that's why, before going through hand signs. Water style, water formation wall. Or not what? I don't think it's the water formation wall, I think it was where you spew a large amount of water that forms a wall, but he would use it to place out the um place put out the flames over Bakugo. 
and dousing dousing the flames and getting uh and getting rid of the toad oil. So Bakugo would sit there with many burns on the ground, having charred skin, but it would heal. Midnight would immediately proclaim Midoriya the winner. Everyone would cheer, seeing how resourceful Midoriya was. He knew exactly how his opponent's quirk worked and used techniques to throw him off guard before you setting his trap. We would then move to the ceremonial um to the end where Bakugo would glare at Midoriya. Um, Bakugo with many bandages surrounding his body would glare at Midoriya. To which All Might would eventually make himself known and would hand out medals to everyone before at the end he would leave the sports festival before the end of the sports festival. We then move on to the internships and the whole shoot or the same incident. As um the next couple, the next day they return to school with Iz- um after having competed in the sports festival. Aizawa then tells the class um that today they um that they had something that had not happened ever I don't think this has ever happened in the UA. First years were chosen who have been sent internship offers, surprising everyone. They knew that second years were the only ones who received internships, second and third uh, third years. So we're surprised when they, a first year class, got some. It had been offered. As everyone makes their way back to, um, goes over their internships, Midoriya actually having the highest amount of offers. It would eventually just, um, be, pull, um, be pulled out of it when Aizawa would say that they would be doing something that would impact the rest of their hero careers, choosing hero names. Eventually, Midnight would come and would oversee it. Izuku would choose, obviously, the sage hero, Jiraiya, deciding to pay homage to his sensei through his hero name. <clears throat> Afterwards, Izuku would go to lunch, but would be pulled aside by All Might, telling him that he had been offered by a man hey. on his Grand Torino. He had been offered by a man on his Grand Torino. And Izuku would say that he'd actually accept since it was All Might's former master. And that's exactly where he'd go for it, arriving at Grand Torino's, um place to find him on the ground. But Midoriya would immediately pick nose would immediately pick up on the smell of ketchup. As he would ask the old man to get out of the ketchup, the old man would say, Huh? Who are you? Or he would say, My name is Izuku Midoriya, called name Jiraiya. It's nice to meet you. That's the man with a smirk. Good introduction there, kid. Before he'd say now, let's see how impressive you are. Do you have your hero costume? Ezrai would say yes, but he doesn't need that to take on a foolish old man such as himself. Gran Torino saying foolish, huh? Well, let's see how foolish you think I am when I kick your face off. Before he would um, use his quirk jet to kick at Midoriya. Surprising when Midoriya placed his hand up in a guard and continued to block it. Anyways, as Izuku, um, one goes, uh, picks their names, Izuku. Well, he would be training with Gran Torino. Blocking Gran Torino's kick, Izuku, Gran Torino would look at Izuku with a bit of surprise. Quite the strong and durable brat you are. Before Izuku says he's a lot more durable than whatever, he can endure whatever Torino dishes out. Before Izuku would grab Torino's leg before throwing him away. Before Torino hit the wall, he used Jet to bounce around. Izuku was, Torino could see Izuku was keeping track of him no matter where, how fast he went. Izuku would go for many. Um, hmm. Izuku, what should I have him use? All right. Izuku would watch as Torino came in for another kick. Having held his hand or hand side, he would turn to Torino before spewing him with oil. Watching as Torino slipped right into the door. Torino to get up. Wondering what is this gunk that he's covered in? It must be that that oil thing, that oil stuff he covered that Bakugo kid and at that at the sports festival. Midoriya. Anyways. Uh, through a while of training with Torino, Torino sits his aside. Ask um Suzuki down and ask why did he specifically decline one for all? Izuku said he actually accepted one for all, but he didn't want one for all right now. Saying that All Might would be weakened to the point where, you know, to where he'd eventually have to retire a bit earlier. 
But if he still had one for all, he could um he could hold out at least a bit longer. He said he's simply just thought of head. And plus he's All Might's been he's been secret he's been training with All Might secretly and All Might's been showing him the ropes of how he himself uses one for all. So that Izuku when he gains the quirk could be well prepared for it. Surprising to really know that Izuku decided to think that far ahead by doing such a thing. Eventually, a couple of days of training with Torino, Torino and Izuku would head out towards Hosu. And once on the train there, Izuku's, you know, naturally honed instincts would tell him something was coming. He would tell everyone to get down as they did so, a Nomu came crashing into the train. Entering the cart, Torino would tackle it out, telling Izuku to stay there. But Izuku managed to tell him that he would help as he jumped down, jumped out of the train and told everyone to hurry up and get home. Izuku would follow after Torino, and but would never find him. As he makes his way through the alleyways, he, just, he decides to begin sticking around. He had heard of this hero killer and didn't want to encounter him, especially knowing that the hero killer prowled into alleyways. So he would use the invincible jutsu. Anyways, as Izuku uses the um invisibility technique that Jiraiya... Um, I think Jiraiya invented it? I'm not sure. But as he uses the technique, he begins prowling around the city. He eventually comes across the alleyway as he watches as Tita begins his... Um, not Tita. Ida begins his, uh, begins his confrontation with, um, with Stain. Right when Stain nicks Ida and uses his quirk on him. Izuku, as Stain's about to um, stab Ida, Izuku throws a kunai, surprising Stain. As his um as his knife was knocked out of his hand, so Stain would look around, asking who was there before Izuku would make himself known. Izuku, speaking not much thing but a word, would rush towards Stain, getting him away. Pushing Stain back far enough, Stain would wonder just how physically strong was this kid. Izuku, beginning back enough, would go through the hand sign for these would cross his fingers. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Watching as a Shadow Clone would pick up both that of Manuel, oh, uh, not paying Manuel, it's Native and Ida. Ida complaining the whole time, telling him to put him down. He has to take, he has to get revenge on his brother's killer. Idoria would look at him before looking back at, um, Stain. Something, um, uh, Stain, he's gotten his objective, but he needs to hold him off and was willingly put his life on the line for them to get the help they need. Stain smiles, saying, you got, the, you got the ideals of a true hero, the makings of a true hero, kid, but I can't let them leave. But Stain hopes to rush past Midoriya, Midoriya and, his, um, and would appear in front of him, blocking <clears throat> the downward sword slash with his arm guards. Midoriya would then tell Stain if he won't stay, if he, if he won't, um, if he won't stay there, then he will have to subdue him before going through many hand signs. Fire style. Um, fireball jutsu. Spewing, spewing a, um, a large wall, a stream of flames at, towards Stain, forcing him to jump back. As Stain rushes towards Midoriya once more, Midoriya would then um, appear next to his shadow clone before slamming his hand in the ground. Earth style, mud wall. As he surrounds, um, as he begins to be surrounded in a wall of mud, Izuku would then go for the fire style dragon flame bombs, using them to force Stain back even further. Izuku would then have a shadow, um, would apply seals to both, um, would have a shadow clone run around the corner before applying both seals to that of Ida and, um, Native. He would then, um, with those seals, would allow him to perform the hiding, like, a, um, the invisibility due to, um, on the two of them and himself, the Shadow Clone hiding with them as they travel through the alleyways. He would eventually make it out into the street to see that they were be the street people were being attacked by no moves, but knowing he couldn't put Ida's life in the line, the Shadow Clone would stay hidden, throwing kunai every once in a while when a Nomu came close to killing someone. The real Izuku would, um, would think he should have bought enough time. 
He would tell Stane that he could continue, he would disengage, but Stane's a known serial killer and he can't let him go. Izuku would rush towards Stane, kunai clashing against sword before he would knock his sword back, before shoving the kunai directly into Stane's arm, surprising him as Izuku then punches him. Izuku would then tell Stan <clears throat> that he's done too much damage. As Izuku <clears throat> would begin speaking to Stan, Izuku would reach into one of his pockets. He would then perform the water style. Oh wait, no, no. Well, I believe he would. He would um search his chakra into the ground into the um under to the water on the ground, which is essentially sewage water. And use that water to um, <clears throat> surge, uh, or no, he could use water style surging C, which produces water from one's own chakra, formed within the mouth to spit out at Stain. Forcing Stain back, Izuku would use the distraction to slap his chakra, um, not his chakra, but his quirk suppressing seal onto Stain. Activating it, Stain would feel his quirk, would wonder. Not feeling any different, wondering what exactly that was. But when he tried to remove the paper, he couldn't budge it. He knew he was smart. Before he rushed towards Stain, as he appeared above him, Rasengan! He would sho- shove the Rasengan directly into Stain's back, surprising him. But this was cause enough pain for Stain to be out for the battle, to be down for the um, battle. He would not get back up. Stain didn't pay with as how can he um <clears throat> why won't he let him go? Midori would say yes, I do believe that you were right in your convictions. There are but your way about going around things is wrong. It's true that there are no true heroes in society. That's what society has forced these kids to go force kids to go up in. They idolize heroes as people who make money, who save the bad guys. Who I'm um, not saying the bad guy save um who who save royalty get, um, gets paid a lot of money and just takes out bad guys. They don't show heroes for what they used to be. People just good Samaritans doing whatever it could to protect the innocents. Saying that most heroes not most young people kids would not see them would he doesn't see any of the people from below his. Uh, before his below his age group ever hoping to uh ever looking at sacrificing their lives for the greater good, he would gladly give give his life if it meant ending <clears throat> if it meant saving people. But he would go beyond that. He would go. For, he would find peace in the world. That was his dream. His dream was not to was not to just end all evil. No, it was to come to an end of violence, the cycle of violence that has been sprouted throughout this world. It would tell Stan that he has now helped him realize his dream, and that he was achieved Stan's dream on his own, saying that he, if he survives all the way into becoming a pro hero, and eventually he'll go and teach at UA as a teacher. So he'd go into UA as a teacher, and would hope to t- um, guide the next generation the right way the proper way into becoming heroes. He would immediately squash any of all their delusions of delusions of what it's like to be a hero. As he tells Stan that he does apologize. But he won't be leaving here unscathed. And he won't be well rather, he won't be leaving at all. Izuku would pick Stain's body up, Stan being in too much uh pain for him to do anything. They would eventually pass out over Midoriya's shoulder as Midoriya makes his way out into, well, not the alleyways, but into the street. And Midoriya meets up with the other pros. Everyone's surprised when he has the hero killer on his shoulder. Midoriya would dump him on the ground, saying that he had captured him before they sat, um, Izuku would make another shadow call and disperse it, causing another shadow clone to appear, another version of him to appear, carrying Ida and Nada. As they were getting looked at, Izuku would be snatched up by a nomi. Izuku would not be paying attention to or listening to his instincts, only for staying to escape his cuffs and to kill the nomi. 
as Stane began to talk about his convictions, what he felt in Stane's speech. It was recorded and placed on the internet, releasing bloodlust. Everyone was affected, except for Izuku. Izuku could release countless, a lot more killing intent than Stane could ever hope of admitting. Izuku would watch as Stane would eventually stop talking. He was smirk. That was a hell of a speech, and then he fell unconscious. The next time we tie a skip is to everyone arriving, um, everyone arriving at the hospital. Where in the next couple of days, they would be um, approached. Well, Izuku more specifically would be approached by the um, the chief of police, telling him that he cannot claim. He cannot claim publicly the victory over Sting, saying that because well he wasn't given permission by his, um, by that of his sensei, and for the fact that he he does not even have his permission. License, Izuku could be removed from the hero course and banned from attending a hero school just because of all of his actions. Saying that Endeavor would be getting the um, Endeavor would be getting the credit because of the burn mark stain um, um, that show up on Stain's body. But he would have bowed to Midoriya saying that as a chief of police he himself would love to thank him. Midoriya would tell him there was no need. But he, he also say he understand. So, we time skip to everyone arriving back at UA. They do, Aizawa does speak to Midoriya about his reckless actions, having been alerted by Nezu of what really went down. And then, Aizawa would alert everyone of their findings. So, as we stare at Izu, um, come back to Izuku, Everyone would come back a week later after going through various study groups. Would come back and would take the final. I see Deku placing at least top three. While everyone else, whoever three is pushing down and push everyone down after that. And that's basically who it was. Up until you reach Deku spotting Hannah and then it's just normal. It's just whoever's there, there. And there. So, with this, we now move on to the part. Portion. Everyone would lining up, claiming how they were going to beat the robots, only for the pro the teachers to make themselves known, surprising all of the students. They asked what exactly was going on here, only for the teachers to reveal that the people that they would be facing would be them, not robots. When the teachers would make themselves known, telling the class that the people that they would be fighting would be them. Everyone else would get their pairing as canon, as would Deku, facing All Might with Bakugo. It would be revealed that All Might would be wearing weights as they fought. And, well, we'll have everyone matches the exact same and be cut to Deku and Bakugo. As the two of them be, um, go there, Bakugo just tells Midoriya to stay out of his way. Midoriya chuckles as he gets the press of the match. <clears throat> Midori will say that he's going to know if he's going to face All Might, he's going to need a bit of a boost. He would then go through the hand size where he's summoning Jutsu. Then two puffs of smoke would appear my paw. Jutsu then would ask, he would say, Izuku boy, what is it that you called us for? Izuku would tell the Toast elders that I um, would say my pa, I would be facing All Might, the number one hero of my um, of the number one hero of Japan, and I am going to need your help in taking him down. The two Toads would not before saying, asking Izuku if he was ready to sync up. As the two of them he would tell them that he must not be going into stage mode, so to not utilize the Jutsu Chakra to um, face him. As Izuku, as All Might, um, as the battle begins, Izuku and and Bakugo would rush in. Bakugo would be defeated swiftly. Would be defeated swiftly by well, would be take uh, sent back swiftly by All Might, but Deku does stand a bit of more of a, ch a chance against him. 
Eventually, Izuku would use. Um, I will force Midoriya to use the needle Jizo before then using the hair needle Senbon or needle Senbon. Sending out um, Senbon um, hair like hair strands and All Might piercing through his arm. All Might would be surprised for having to force himself to endure pain to rip them out. Midori would smile and tell All Might that he was sorry about this. Midori would rush towards All Might. Ducking under a blow, Midori would create a Rasengan, telling Ma now. Ma would jump off of Izuku, breaking them, um, their synchronization, kicking All Might in the face as Izuku placed the Rasengan right at All Might's injury. Using the, uh, just making sure the Rasengan was unstable, would use the kickback from it to send All Might flying back. He would then have Ma perform the, the Megan Gamma Rencho, the Gamma Rencho, which is the demonic illusion toad confrontation chant. All Might would be extremely surprised, being trapped in what seems to be a transparent box. And the illusion is caught based on the illusion. Izuku would smile. Bakugo would be surprised looking at Deku. And Midoriya smirked. Midori would then say, would then rush towards, um, well, actually, he would realize that he couldn't use this on All Might. Placing it away, he would tell Bakugo to hand him the handcuffs. Bakugo would do so, regardlessly, as Midori would slap them on All Might, the Genjutsu breaking. All Might would ask Midori what had happened. Well, I think that was the right Genjutsu, I'm not sure. President Mike would then proclaim Bakugo and Midoriya the winners. Although this time, Bakugo would not pass. Seeing as how the fact Midoriya did literally all the heavy lifting, Bakugo would not, um, <clears throat> Bakugo would not pass the, this, the finals. Though, it would be revealed that even those who failed would still be going to Simicap. Everyone would go to that of, <clears throat> would go to that of the uh, mall for uh, equipment for for um for getting things on the summer cap, and while there, Izuku will be confronted, confronted by confronted by Shigaraki. So, Shigaraki would ask me, Doyle, why is it that staying? Why is it that all the media talked about was staying? His no moves should have taken. Spain has taken the spotlight from him. His no moves should have had the spotlight. The legal villains should have had that spotlight. I'm gonna have Midori give him the same speech as Canada since I can't remember or I think the names is the same. From here, eventually Shigaraki would leave and the mob would then go into lockdown. Afterwards, um, once all of this would pass, everyone would then, in the next couple of days, everyone would then leave for that of the training camp. Anyways. Izuku, Izuku, once everyone in, uh, and as gets on the bus and makes their way towards the summer camp, they would eventually stop off towards a ledge. Izuku's instincts would begin warning him about some something bad was going to happen. Once another car pulled up and the Wild Wild Pussycats showed up, due to Izuku's extensive knowledge on their quirks, well, knowledge on what their quirks are, he would narrow his eyes. Before eventually they will all be thrown, thrown, not thrown, thrown down into, into the force below, only for, uh, to reveal a log in the place of where Midoriya was in the air. Midoriya would say, "Wow, Sensei, you guys almost got me." Earth style mudslide, before sending the Wawa Pussy Cats and Aizawa down, down towards them with the rest of the students. Surprisingly, Midori would smirk. Like, how would you like that now? The Wawa Pussycats and Aizawa would be quite surprised. Izuku would ask the kid if he was alright. The kid would nod and Midori would, um, Midori would tell the kid to come along, that he'll take him down to base camp. Midori would pick the kid up and would begin, um, would begin running down towards it. Once he made it close enough, he would jump into the trees and make it all the way there. 
Bitch, they asked out in the wild while Pussycats would get backed up, asking me Dory wasn't there anymore, who was showing their shoulders. They would eventually have me Dory, um, have, um, make it to the camp to see me Dory and Koda there speaking. Izuku telling, trying to get Koda to read an orange book. They didn't know what this book was. But they could, um, they really didn't know what this book was at all. So when they got there, as I walked out, he scolded at Midoriya. He did ask what was their book. Midori would tell him to give it, tell them to get it to read before tossing it at him, saying that it should be published quite soon. As he gives a sort of perverted chuckle. Well, if his cats and Aizawa read the book, and well, some of them would have, oh, all of them would have blushes, but Aizawa would seem to be a bit angered. Problem child, he'd say. The rest of the students would eventually calm down, uh, make it out of the forest, and seeing Midori, they would ask why didn't he help them. But yet, why wasn't he with them? Midori would say that he, well, he wasn't tricked into it like they was, and rather, he sent the teachers down. They did notice how the teachers didn't join them. As he gives a hearty laugh, he would then go on to say that afterwards he got the kid and, well, the rest is history. Saying that him alone, he could have gotten down here in maybe three minutes tops, even with fighting whatever creatures they were fighting. Which shows the level of skill he has compared to them, giving another hearty chuckle. Everyone would then be um, would eat at look at the dinner prepared for them by the Wawa Pussycats, who would then say that the next while they're here, they will be preparing their own meals. Everyone would eat and go to the onsen, where just like Hannah, Mineta would try to peek, but not only Mineta, so would Midoriya. Except when Koda um, knocks Mineta over and is about to fall, Midoriya is already on the top of the roof holding him, like using that of um, of a telescope to look in. And he would be scribbling in the book, chuckling with a nosebleed. Toto would say, you pervert, would try to hit Izuku, only for Izuku to send the kid back a bit, telling him to butt out of it, kid. But later on, Izuku, uh, when Koda would get, um, uh, when Izuku would decide to leave, he would tell Koda to be careful when it comes to being on top of the ledge. He almost fell from me. From there, it was quite the job. Eventually, everyone would go to bed, and the next day they would begin training. Izuku would be training with, uh, I can't remember who had the earth based quirk. I think it wasn't Mandalay, was it Pixie Bob, or was it wasn't Tiger? I know that, so it was either Pixie Bob, I can't remember the other. Let me see who the other was. We would actually train with the three members of. The Wild Wild Pussycat being Tiger, the other one being Ragdoll, and Pixie Bob, because Pixie Bob has an Earth-based quirk, and he's, you could can train and get some um, techniques from her that he would convert into chakra-based jutsus, and the two of them can bounce ideas off, and strength training he could train with Tiger, and in terms of increasing, um, and in terms of becoming a sensor, he trains with Ragdoll, whose quirk is called Search. By the time Izuku's done, well, he actually sends Shadow Clones to train with both Pixie Bob and Ragdoll while he physically trains with, Rag, uh, with Tiger. And in the end, by the end of the day, they they have been made, joined by Class 1B, would all be preparing a, a dinner for themselves. Midoriya, rather himself, would decide to live off the land, hunting the animals that were um that were in that lived in the forest and eating them for himself. Izuku could do this on his own. It was one of the things he was taught by Jiraiya. One summer when he told his mother he was going out camping to learn to survive, to learn the necessary survival skills to survive in certain situations. Having spent a month living off the land. Anyways. Anyways. As the next day comes around, um, they continue their training, and but it wouldn't be until later that night that Izuku would make his way up towards the mountain where Koda was for the second time. Because Koda had yet to eat, Izuku decided to bring him dinner. And well, you know, actually um, knowing that where Koda was, Izuku would make his way there, decided to cook his dinner there. But when he noticed that Koda, well, his stomach was essentially, um, 
growling, he would decide to share some of his food, which Koda would reluctantly take. Izuku and Koda would sit there. As Koda would then ask, once Izuku was done, would then ask him to leave. This one Midoriya would chuckle. Midoriya would tell Koda that's fine, but he, and then he could find his way back to camp, but can he? Koda would nod, but before Midoriya could leave, a cloaked figure would appear. Midoriya would immediately bite his thumb and slam the hands onto the ground, summoning Jutsu. In Midoriya's hand would be two stone swords. Midoriya would ask who he was, the villain. And then, um, Izuku would watch as muscle-like tendrils would appear around the man's arm as he went to punch him. Midoriya using the swords to block the punch. The punch not even cracking the blades. Midoriya would knock the man's arm away before slashing across the right side of his body. Right at where his kidney was. The man would drop to the ground, surprised. As Midori would say that unlike most other heroes, that he would do what he was willing to take in order to save anyone. That includes this kid, even if it meant killing him. So do not test me. Surprising the villain, saying that I never knew we had such a kid like you to fight. Most of the like, tendrils, were the, he would throw away the cloak. Causing Koda to shake, telling Izuku that it was him. That was the man who killed his parents, surprising Deku. I mean, Deku would then chuckle, saying, So, you come out with the kid, huh? Well, I won't let that happen. Earth style. Um, I think it was Dragon Mud Bullet or something like that. Or Mud Dragon Bullet. This is a technique used by heroes in Saratobi. Um, in this battle against the Rochimaru. Let's see. It was the Earth style Earth Dragon Bullet technique. That's what it was called. Using that against um muscular to send him, um with the Earth style um Earth Flow River or Mud Flowing River to um throw muscular's balance off. Uh, bullets that the Earth Dragon would shoot at him would do quite a amount of damage, pushing him closer and closer to the edge of the, of the um, cliff. Izuku would then tell um, make a shadow clown, telling Koda to head back with it towards the camp. Before Izuku, with his two um, stone swords, would rush at muscular, stabbing them right into his shoulders as they fell off the cliff. Izuku would throw multiple punches, eventually landing on top of muscular, standing victorious. Muscular wouldn't have survived. The battle. He had come in heavily underestimated Izuku, thinking that yeah, the kid may have been a little fast, but he wasn't that significant. Like, well, I guess we you could say that he think twice. Anyways, once Izuku um went to defeat muscular, he would um de-summon the swords before um sealing away muscular within a prisoner skull. Izuku would then rush out the code. Well, rather, would not rush out the code, but would rush into the forest area where he could sense multiple villains being. Being there first, the first one they would be to front, he would come across the, I believe, the villain that could shoot blades from his mouth or teeth. Izuku would have to summon a one stone, stone sword to throw him off. He would eventually come to a battle against Dobby and Toga first before anyone. Um, Dobby and Toga, but Spinner would refuse to battle the kid, saying that he was, he was the kid that Stan would allow to live. Is when Dobby wears uses cremation flames, he could put um a place up an earth wall to protect him, before jumping into the air using the water style surging sea technique to um to put, put out some of Dobby's flames and to soak the entire area in water and mud. Surprising everyone when Toga came in and tried to slash him as he continuously dodged with ease. Izuku would grab one hand, her hand with a knife before backhanding her gut with his other free hand. Sending Toga back before Izuku stuck his hand into the um muddy ground. Earth style, Swamp of the Underworld technique. 
as everyone would begin sinking even spinner underneath that of this um, mud under the mud Dobby would go to try would begin to to engulf himself in flames before Izuku was used the um ninja art told oil bullet to engulf everyone in flame I mean and oil as Dobby did ignite it um oh, the entirety of the um underground the mud swamp he would then Dobby would then ignite it with his own flames, not having paid attention to the information they were given about the kid. Everyone would begin screaming in, in pain, causing them to not be able to get a hold of anyone. Well, almost not being able to get a hold of anyone. Dobby, Toga, Spinner, and the two villains would all decay into what seemed to be something similar to the mud clone technique. Izuku would be searching, finding an unknown signature next to Bakugo before Bakugo vanished. Or, better yet, he didn't vanish. It's as if Bakugo's signature got compressed into a tiny object. Izuku would head there, watching until he made it and confronted the villain, a villain known as Mr. Compress, who was a magician, apparently. He would fight him, but it was actually a bit, it was a bit more challenging than Izuku would give credit to anyone. This is the um, more challenging um, fighting style he had to come across. Eventually, Compress would manage to, um, thanks to the interference of Todoroki trying to fight Mr. Compress, it would give Compress the opportunity to run away and to make it through a portal, escaping with Bakugo and not Tokoyami. In the end, everyone would, um, in the end, at this time, Ragdoll would not be taken. Because um, she, um, unlike the rest of the students, were confronted by the other vil- villains. Midoriya would snap at Todoroki, telling him he had that and he did not need him to interfere. Later on, everyone would ask Midoriya what happened and Midoriya would recount the story. As I would say that they took Bakugo. Midoriya would nod, saying that he could find Bakugo, he could possibly find Bakugo. As we, as um, Aizawa asked him how, Midori says he always knew Bakugo would eventually get on the wrong side of some people. So when he learned the art of four jutsu and learned a specific seal, a seal known as the tracking seal, he had well planted it on Bakugo. He says that though he cannot stand Bakugo, he would never want to see Bakugo in harm's way whatsoever and would do whatever it took to help him. He's saying, well, to be honest, I knew eventually the villains would attack us again. We were the class that defeated the League of Villains, and I knew they'd hold a grudge. So, actually, everyone has, may or may not have a, um, a tracker sin on them. Everyone would be quite surprised to hear that Midoriya had tagged them all. Midoriya would say that the seal is invisible, and it will only become visible when he wants to. Everyone watching as seals, as Midoriya went through a side and weird black mark, a black tattoo would appear on their palms of their hands, some on their shoulders or their back. Even Aizawa would have one. As Midoriya would chuckle, <laughs> secretly, as he would, as a buck, as I would tell Midoriya that they'll speak about this later, but for now, he's their best chance at saving Bakugo. Everyone would have to leave the camp. And Izuku would say, tell um, the Wawa Pussycats that they need to watch out for Ragdoll. He says that he did manage to get some information. And the only information he got from them speaking was that they failed two objectives. One was, well, one of them was to kill him, either kill or capture him. And the other was to capture Ragdoll for her quirk. Izuku would say that he could do something to help Ragdoll with her quirk to help them protect Ragdoll. They would wonder what he would do, and he would, Izuku would then place on a seal on Ragdoll before Midori would go through hand size before seeing transformation jutsu. Watching as the, um, Izuku place his hand on the seal, watching as tra- a Ragdoll transform, I can't remember if she, if she was, I think Ragdoll was, was she blonde? I'm not sure. Oh, well, she had green hair. So she would transfer rather from her green hair state to black hair. 
her appearance or overall change to someone of the um of the Naruto world that That's right, Captain. We're gonna just say Tsunade. Surprising everyone that Midoriya created this. As Midoriya would say that it's an old friend of his sensei that he transferred, transformed her into. He would say that this should keep her appearance quite well hidden from anyone but him. And they should all know that it's Ragdoll because, you know, they were here. As everyone leaves class, Midoriya sits at the front of the bus with Aizawa. Midoriya would tell Aizawa he knows what he has to do now, right? Aizawa would wonder what is he speaking of. Midoriya would say it's obvious that there is a traitor within class 1A, and he already has an idea on who it is. But he needs that person to confess to him. And so that he can figure out why, and possibly help them if need be. Aizawa would nod his head. We then move on past this into that of, well, the raid on Kamino Ward. But, but before that, or the Bakugo rescue mission, but before that, Izuku would be pulled aside by All Might. Izuku would be accompanying the heroes to, um, not rather than to the Nomu lab, but to the Omega um, Villains base with All Might. Izuku would ask, uh, All Might would then grab a piece of his hair. Having watched it the other day, he would tell Izuku to eat this. As Izuku says, it's come to that time, huh? All Might. All Might would not say that the man that he would be battling, he doesn't think he's coming back from it. He would apologize to Midoriya, saying that he wished there could be another way, but there isn't. He wished there was another way, but there simply is not. Midoriya says he understands, as he swallows the piece of hair. Midoriya then uses the I think it was the, uh, either, either, I think it's the Ninja Art um, Toad Transformation Technique to transform into a toad that would then sit on All Might's shoulder. So, it would be the, um, turning into a frog technique or the, um, the frog conversion technique. Izuku would transform and would sit on All my shoulder as All Might began the raid. The rest of the vil- League of Villains would be um, incapacitated until they're eventually warped away by that. Uh, until, well, they have to battle with Bakugo, who is freed during this time. But eventually, Bakugo was saved by the rest of his classmates, as All Might is confronted by All for One. As often would say, my, my, all might. It seems you weren't ever able to find a successor. I guess one for all dies today. As all might would smirk, saying that he did find a successor. Often were asked, what's with the frog? What's with the toad? Therefore, all might would eyes are wider and forgot that young Midori was there. Before he would hear, release. On all my shoulder was Midoriya. Before he jumped off, standing in um, his hero costume, Midori would then summon two stone swords, and then with once he placed the swords on the ground, he would then summon Ma and Pa. Midori would wipe blood on across his face. Midori would then tell um, Off One that he would he would not survive today. He would tell All Might to buy him some time for him to complete his. As on my night, Midoriya began to meditate. This um help with the toes to help him enter sage mode. Using the synchronization technique, All Might would could, would begin his battle with Alpha One, and eventually Izuku would enter it. He's, as Alpha One as Alpha One sent those same black tendrils that did kill um that almost nearly killed that injured Bakugo from that Shigaraki used to injure Bakugo, um Izuku would appear in front of them. Um, punching directly through them, surprising all for one and all might. Everyone would be also be surprised with this before Midoriya with the two toads on his on his um shoulders would rush towards all for one before using the frog kumite to punch at all for one. All for one realizing that he had dodged only to be sent flying by Midoriya. 
He do it with a smirk. All my would smile, seeing his apprentice. He would jump up, perform it, using a smash technique to send off one deeper into the ground. Well, to further cratering the ground underneath him. Before, um, Izuku would then, and out of his toes would go through the, um, would clap their hands together. Senpo. Oh, I, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. But it's the sage art, um, bath of boiling oil. Using the jutsu to, um, Ma spitting out fire, Izuku spitting out oil, and Pa spitting out wind. An oil, an oil wave would rush over all from one before it would engulf in a giant explosion from the fire and wind. Izuku would stop the technique. As often when he uses regenerative quirk, use the regenerative quirk to um, heal his injuries. He would begin floating as Midori begins to tire. We tell All Might that this power up is running low. This is the first real battle he's had in his in his form. Midoriya would then tell um, Shima and Fukusaku to gather chakra for two more techniques. Enough Senjutsu for two techniques. Two more techniques. They would sit still as All Might continues his battle. The weakening of one for all even further, eventually showing All Might's true form. Izuku would then rush behind off one. Before he would then... Say, uh, I believe it was the twin Wasengan technique. I can't remember what it was. But it was it was the Wasengan barrage. With two Wasengans in hands, he would slam. Oh, uh, and these are Sinjutsu and Amphi's Wasengans. He would slam them into Alpha One's back before jumping away, having the chakra for just one more Sinjutsu based technique. Izuku would come off with an idea, telling All Might to not waste that last match, to hold on to that ember one for all, telling him to hold on to that ember of his quirk. As Midori would tell um would tell Ma Pa, he would whisper to him, Ma Pa, jump on his shoulders and release all the Senjutsu chakra you have into him. I would ask that that could kill the man. Izuku says he won't, but it will. That's what he wants. He needs the man to be petrified from, from the Senjutsu chakra. Their eyes widen. As he says that he would be sealed up. He would be placed on Mount Miyaboku where no one would ever free him. He could even have specialized seals there. The two nod. Before Izuku would rush towards that of Ultima. Getting close enough to lock um to lock arms with each other. You know how wrestlers do like when I start a match similar to that. Before Ma and Pa would jump off his shoulders and I would do all for one. Izuku with Ma and Pa would pour all this into would concentrate this energy to chakra into his hands before sending it all throughout all for one's body. All for one would chuckle, saying, What silly attack are you doing now? Before he began screaming in pain as he noticed his body began to turn to stone. But he could not do anything as he was completely petrified. Ma and Pa. We catch the collapsing Izuku. All Might would raise his hand up high, as would Ma and Pa, and they would raise Izuku's hand up before All Might would point at Izuku. Everyone, the, the light would flash against the kid, who was pointing at All Might. As he had finally gotten up, as he had finally gotten an unbalanced and alertness of the um, surrounding area. This was really tired, Izuku would then promptly pass out. Next time Izuku would awaken, he would awaken in the hospital. Um Toshinori Yai being there instead of All Might. Izuku would say hey All Might. His All Might would smile. Say again Midoriya. You did good out there today. What did those two toes take off of you? By the way. As Izuku said, somewhere where he won't be hurting anyone ever again. A place known as Mount Miyaboku. It's actually sealed within a special space-time dimension. So you have to be able to you know, warp into that space-time and know that it exists to get there. Surprising All Might. He would look in the corner as Midoriya noticing the technique Jutsu. 
who's saying why send them there instead of to Tartarus? As Midoriya says, overworld will cause unforeseen issues in the future. He knows this will He's saying sending the men to jail will not end the threat that he poses to society. Saying that now the rest of the League of Villains need to be hunted down. As Midoriya he tells All Might that a quirk seal has been placed on Alpha One and multiple barrier seals along with a paralyzing seal will be placed on it in case a toad ever comes across a statue. They will not be able to release them. Saying these specialized seals were actually developed by his sensei Jiraiya and not taught to anyone else, except for the two elder toads who refused to teach anyone but him. Teach to take the seals to anyone but him, he says. He's the only one who has access to those seals and to the key. Similar to, you would say the key is similar to how Nomu is now, but under a lot more def, under a lot more defensive than Tartarus could ever hope to provide. Kachi, but not telling Midoriya that's good. Saying that he's going to have to tell the media that All Might sanctioned that. Stating that Tartarus would be would not end all for once evil throughout the world. But Midoriya would not. He would sit there with All Might. Because All Might says that now it's time to begin his training in one for all. So, after this, we begin going into the provisional licenses. Can't really remember what happened in between that between them incident, but they did move into dorms. I do know that they moved in. I, I remember this part. Not that I know that, but I remember the portion where they moved into dorms and did get to know each other. Eventually, it would be time for them to gain their provisional licenses. And well, since I don't know much about this, I'll have these Yuku still gain such. I can't remember much. Not that I don't know much. I plan to rewatch the entirety of this arc this weekend. That arc this weekend, and um, so yeah, do is be do be expecting um me to remember that the next time or what or uh, my hero what if comes out, I'll hopefully remember it properly. But yes, I'll have Izuku still pass with the provisional license. Todoroki not passing. Well, Todoroki and Bakugo both not passing. But with everyone else in class when they get their internships, they would then go into work studies. Izuku would be approached by um, Mirio to go with Alpha One. Though after Mirio had a battle with Class 1A, everyone except Izuku, who seemingly could um, detect Mirio no matter whether he was permeating or not. So, anyways. After um, Izuku would speak to Mirio and would um, and would accept the invitation to work under Sir Nadai for the work study, Izuku would head to Sir Nadai's agency. Nidoriya would not have um, would not be able to make him um, would not be able to make him laugh. But instead, Midoriya um, uh, Sir Nadai would still undergo the test, forcing Midoriya to get the stamp. And this, to be honest. Sure not, I would not <laughs> manage to keep that step away from Midoriya, and this, if I'm being honest with you, causing Midoriya to officially begin working on the Sir Night Eye. Sir Night Eye um, would have Mirio and Izuku undergo um, patrolling together, and while they were out on patrol, Izuku would come across a young girl. Seeing the girl was injured, and Izuku sensing another present coming from the other way, Izuku would tell Mirio to go now. He would tell Mirio to head out, saying that he'll take care of whatever this, whatever is coming. He would ask the girl if she was alright before a man came out saying, Ah, oh, Eri, there you are. I mean, Dory could feel the fear and sort of the killing, the um, bad intentions or the bloodlust that this man was releasing. Izuku would narrow his eyes at him. I knew who he was. The man was saying, My name is, um, who he was. He was saying, I am Eri's father. Midori could already be um, trained by Jirai could tell that the man was lying, saying you're lying and I can tell. Who are you? The man was snarling Midori's hand to hand over his daughter, or he'd go to the uh, to the proper authorities to get her back, if he, or to have them arrested. Midori would say, "Good luck with that," saying that I don't know any police, um, anyone within the force 
that would be able to take me out down besides a pro hero. So I'll ask again, who are you? The man would snarl. He would, he would tell Eric to come now. We were getting to move his head, but when Eric tried to run, Izuku would not let go. He would tell him to let go, but he hurt him. Izuku would say that that man could not hurt him because they weren't here. Because they were no longer there. Therefore, Midori and Eri would go in a puff of smoke and a log, which Overhaul would run at Tron, um, at to see the puff of smoke and would um, touch the log, bursting the log in bug, using his quirk on the log, disassembling it. Seeing, um, seeing no sign of Eri whatsoever, he would snarl, see, damn it, where was that kid at? Izuku would, would appear with Eri on, on a rooftop, as he would find where Muriel was. He would tell Eri to hold on, to brace herself, before Izuku would use the binder flicker technique to appear next to Muriel. Muriel would ask Midoriya what's happening. And Midoriya would say that there was a villain, uh, or someone proclaiming to be Eri's father. He would ask how did you know this because Izuku says he's been trained to detect liars, and the man was a terrible liar. Or, well, he had an easy tell. Plus, because of this, um, plus, Aries seems to be quite afraid for him. I would never give her to him because she's probably, he's probably abusive anyway. Hidori would tell Aries that he's going to send her some, he's going to take her someplace where that man can never reach her. He said that and he will be back once he finds all, all the information from Sir he come back to get to retrieve her. Eri would not. Thank you, Izuku, asking for his name. And when he says his name, is um, Izuku Midoriya. But she could call him Deku or Jiraiya. Eri would um, thank Izuku, calling him Deku. As Izuku put it, and uh, Muriel would continue to um, go to head to Sir Nade's agency, Midoriya and Eri would disappear in a puff of smoke, appearing on Mount Miyaboku, right in front of Ma and Pa. Eri would be surprised by them, but would be a bit scared also. Izuku would tell Eri not to fear because these people were, they were good, they were good toads. He would explain to Eri that this place was not exactly on the planet, and no matter what overall he did, he could never reach her from here. He was smiling at her, saying that once he got all the information he knew that she was safe from that man, she would bring him back. He would look at Ma and Pa, telling her to, to take care of him, and to go to the Shinobi world and proclaim, and to get as much human food as, as possible for her in the time being, and to not fix her any, as he shudders, any bugs, please. Ma would swag Izuku over the head, saying that such a disrespectful brat doesn't respect her cooking. Before, she would say very well then, and the two would take Eri in and would continue to look, and would begin to look after her. Izuku would eventually make it back into the city, back to the city, back due to the reverse summoning. He would head to Sir Nida's agency, who would parade him for his reckless actions, saying the man he confronted was known as, was, I think it was Kai Tosaki or known as villain name overall, and that's the name of his work, which allowed him to disassemble and reassemble anything he touched. And that he's the, uh, he's the boss of the Yakuza in the area. I don't know what family, I can't remember what exactly the name was. He says that he's compromised their case, but Izuku says he really hasn't. He tells, he tells him that he'll get overhaul, he get as much information on overhaul as possible. He asks how would he do so as Izuku says give him a week's time. And then he'd save and then he'll bring back all the information here. In a week's time, call for a meeting between whoever you want. So I can present the information to you, he drops. My eye would nod. Saying very well, Midori, I'm trusting you on this type of secret mission. As Midori was said and to send Mirio um and to say that, that he would send Mirio with the information in case it's hard to escape. He would alert Muriel with, before place touching Muriel's ear, Night Eye watching as a tattoo would appear before disappearing into Muriel's skin. He would ask what it was, and Mizuka would say it's a communicating seal. It would allow him to communicate with Muriel in case he was ever caught. Izuku would then, um, would then leave the building before heading off through his 
before building an information network, a spy network throughout the city, and eventually finding where the Yakuza was. Izuku would then use the told flat and shadow manip- manipulation technique in, um, by hiding into shadows of the um, men in Overhaul's base, traveling underneath him, and eventually latching on Overhaul's shadow. Going everywhere he was, he would gather as much information as possible, hidden within scrolls, until Overhaul had to leave a week late um, at exactly at the day of his deadline. Once he noticed that off one had turned the corner, um, I mean, Overhaul had turned the corner and his shadow had not yet fully done so, Izuku would climb out of the shadow. Hide hugging the wall, making sure that Overhaul had not noticed him, Izuku, with a, with a scroll as he continued to write in it, would then roll the scroll up before placing it in his jacket and vanishing in a puff of smoke. Overhaul would look back, wondering what that sound was. Having heard it recently, he'd think maybe it was that kid, but there was no way. He continued about his day. Izuku would appear in Night Eye's office. As, oh, Night Eye's agency was well, specifically in his office. Surprising Night Eye. As Night Eye would say, Izuku, how have things gone with their information gathering? Izuku would say, quite well, actually. Before throwing the scroll onto Night Eye's desk, as Night Eye would unravel their reading through all the information. He would nod, telling Izuku that since Area was not there, they would have to extract the old leader of the Yakuza. Izuku says not to worry that he could do so with the help of this. Izuku would then bring out a three-pronged kunai, saying that it was his master's um, student's prize jutsu, and that obviously his master knew how to perform it. Saying that he's placed a seal on the man's bed that would and the medical equipment that would bring it here. That would bring or um that would bring it the man here or into a hospital where he could be properly looked at while they they go through with the raid. Saying that it was a space time essentially a space time based ability. It was like it's teleportation or more similar to instantaneous, but not as fast as not exactly instantaneous, but more like a flash, light speed teleportation, if maybe even faster. Not I not saying that that was quite a good technique. As Izuku then had um not I organized the raid. Eventually, Izuku would have to go to the hospital where they would clear out a room, a room for the man to be placed within um, a medical room for, for the, the man to appear in. Once the raid commenced, Izuku would latch onto the seal. But having placed one kunai right in the area, right in, with um, Miriam, giving the kunai to Miriam for him to flash to him, Izuku would appear in the hospital before... Concentrating chakra, he would find the seal placed on the man and his equipment before using the flying lodging to bring him here. Or rather to teleport there and to teleport back actually would be the more precise thing. Because I do I do know I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if he could teleport things to him, but I do know he could teleport things to another location. Um no. But yes, Izuku would teleport the man there. Using the Horatian. And would make it back to Mirio. Though he had been taxed on Chakra. But thankfully he had one for all to fall back on. It was a lot of Chakra. But he still had quite a large amount of Chakra reserve. Chakra left in his reserves. As Izuku continued his battle. Um, began this battle with Mirio. They would eventually make it to confronting Overhaul. Who would ask where Eri was. Before Izuku says nowhere. Before Izuku would say that this would destroy any and every inorganic material here. Or um, everything that Overhaul had built for. It would all be destroyed here and now. As Izuku would place down a seal. Izuku would then tell everyone to clear the building. You tell Mirio to go. As Izuku rushed towards him using full cowling 15%. Speed blitzing overhaul and getting him out of the building before off one overall could even notice thanks to the boost of not only one for all and full cowling, but thanks to his own natural speed and chakra boosting. Once everything was done, Izuku would activate the seal, watching as overhaul's base was sealed within a space-time jutsu.
Izuku was smirk as Overhaul, who was quite a distance away, anger would never get to merge with his um, goon. Instead, he would have to um, use his quirk to attack to set pillars of stone at that of, at the pro heroes. Izuku would appear in front of him using a um, I believe he's what does Izuku use? It's been such a long time doing the original one for all base um, quirk. What if that I can't even remember? But he would land a pretty devastating kick to Overhaul's gut, causing him to double over in pain as he shot before he um to um double over in pain. As Midori continues the motion of the swing, he's then shot through multiple buildings. Izuku then grabs Mirio before throwing him at Overhaul. Is Mirio um Mirio permeating through many walls as he made the his way there, while using one wall to increase his speed as he popped as he popped him out, punching Overhaul in the face. This would do enough damage that Overhaul would be dazed. Midori would appear next to him before placing a chakra seal on him. He would tell Overhaul that he, while was a villain, he wasn't a very powerful one. That once you discern how his abilities work, you could seal them. Away. He well, he could have sealed his abilities away at any point. And he gave them a chance to fight back. Then he won't do that again to any other villain. He was still overhauled. And he would now be hunting his friends, the League of Villains, if they were in co- knowing that they were in cohorts because there were some um, members of the League of Villains that had been here before they disappeared into Purple Portal. Saying that he would be going after his friends and making sure they were captured. That's exactly what would happen. After defeating Shigaraki, um, after defeating Overhaul and him being sent to prison, Izuku would go out on a hunt for Shigaraki, using his own information network that he set up throughout the entirety of Japan, and even into some villain groups, he would find out that Shigaraki was being moved to a lab base somewhere in a mountain-like range, a hidden lab of Ultra One, for Dr. Garaki, or also as he was known, Dr. Tsubasa, Tsubasa's grandfather and the man who had diagnosed him as quirkless. It caused him to think, had that man taken his quirk, had off one taken his quirk all those years ago, it wasn't Dr. Tsubasa's fault. Tsubasa's fault, not Tsubasa. Tsubasa. Eventually, Izuku would make his way to the location with the help of Mirio and All Might. Um, and many pro heroes, they would raid the building. And before, since Shigaraki didn't undergo all those modif- same modifications as he did in canon at this point, Izuku and them, it would be a complete victory, taking down Shigaraki, leaving the other villain, other pros to take out the other, um, the other members of the League of Villains, such as Izuku, ta- um, with the help of information, would take out Toga and even Dobby. Twice was taken out, as was Mr. Well, I think Mr. Capress was captured during that of the, um, what was it, during the raid at Kamino Ward. I, I knew when he was captured there. But with the rest of the League of Villains being captured quite easily due to Izuku's efforts and his, um, thanks to his spy network throughout Japan, and even through that of the villain, um, underground uh, villain networks, Japan would now be, um, would no longer have to worry about the, um, that of the, um, what is it called? The danger that the League of Villains um, possessed. They would no longer have to worry about them. So, with the League of Villains not taken care of, he could time skip for many years into the future. Izuku had finally graduated and had begun his internship with, um, would, well, begin as a sidekick. What did I say? I say even, I even, no, he wouldn't go with the Wild Wild. Cat states to be there. Actually, I'll have him become a sidekick for work at UA, beginning to teach the next generation as he had told Stain. Teaching many students, such as Coda and even Ari. From here, we get time to be a bit even further. I know the end is a bit rushed, but stick with me here. Um, Izuku would eventually even teach 
um, would eventually be proclaimed the next number one hero, with his mastery over one for all, and eventually the awakening of the several other quirks such as Black Whip, Fajin, Smokescreen, Lot, um, Danger Sense, um, Gear Shift. Um, was that it? I think I'm missing a quirk for sure. But with the awakening of these quirks, Izuku would become a sealer, a strong pillar of peace, and would actually find, manage to bring in an era of peace, fighting against quirk discrimination all across the world. So given those who have villain quirks in the future would even grow up with the even better upbringing than Deku would have, or those who were quirkless. Those who were quirkless would be offered martial arts class from young ages so that they could grow up and become heroes and accomplish whatever dream they wanted, rather than being told that they were useless and becoming nothing but either villain, low-level villains or not. They would become heroes. From here, we can end the what if. Now, in the description is obviously, as I said earlier in the promotional Promotional segment is that of Six Meister's Fiverr account. It is very good for both your thumbnails. Um, he has thumbnails, he has fan art ideas, and he has OC creation. Go check him out. Link in the description. Check out my Discord. Join it. Um, I don't really know how the whole Discord is. I do be on Discord a lot though. So go ahead, join it. I'm going to edit this video, have it out by well later on today because it's four o'clock in the morning on March first, Friday, Friday March first. I'm gonna help edit this video. Have it. I'm gonna. Um, as when I finish editing it, I'm gonna export it. And as I edit, it, I'm gonna go to sleep. Hopefully, when I wake up from it being exported, I can just upload it to YouTube. But I hope you guys have a good day. That's gonna be your boy. What if entertainment out? And I will see you guys later. Wait, actually, before I say that, I need to decide on what what if I'll be doing next. So I'll let you guys know that now. Okay, so next week will be three what ifs will be uploaded. My upload schedule is only on Monday and Fridays, but because the video that I posted earlier, the audio was messed up on the intro, I will be re uploading on Wednesday the What If Deku was Green Arrow. What if uh, I will add the promotional segment in that um in that video also? But um, the two what ifs that will be coming would be What If Deku, um, um I, hopefully, I'll have this out Monday. What if Deku was. If not Monday on Tuesday, what if Deku was the son of Reverse Flash? This is more specifically the Reverse Flash of CW. And then the next what if would be a Naruto what if. More specifically, let's see which thumbnail I will choose. Probably going to be the... Um, let's see. I want, oh, I know what I'm going to do. What if Naruto was the Winter Soldier? So I hope you guys will enjoy those what ifs. They will be coming out on Monday would be what if Deku was reverse flash, the son of reverse flash. And two, and Friday would be the what if Deku was that, uh, was the Winter, what if Naruto was the Winter Soldier. And two, and Wednesday would be what, on um, the re-upload of what if Deku was the Green Arrow. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Enjoy your day.